We are being recorded. Thank you very much, Susan um, or John or whoever does that for us. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to call, um, make sure everybody who is voting is here today. And um, so I'm going to start with Alexa. I here, present. Court. Present. Heather. Good morning. Um, I cannot see the the screen. So, does is Frank waving to us? I don't see Frank yet, Pat. Yes. Yeah. Frank's no, I there. see him. He's there. Oh, you do? Okay. He's I, I saw his name earlier. So. Oh, there he is. Yep. Hey, Frank. I missed you. Peter. Present. Don. Present. Lori. Good morning. Matt Johnson. Anybody see Matt? I don't see him yet. Okay. Uh, Chris? Oh, Pat, that's me. Yes, I'm here. Chris? Present. Charlie? Here. Matt Root? Present. Stephen Stashevsky? Aye, present. So it looks like we have everybody here. Um, I'm sure Matt will be joining us in a moment. Um, I just want to start this meeting um, before we, we go to the agenda, um, acknowledging um, the, the work that Hill and SMMA did to take our, our poll results, which kind of came in. We got everybody's uh, submission sort of at the last minute. I saw that Susan was working on, Susan and Ian were working on it quite late last night. It came out late last night. I know that we had requested to get the packets earlier, um, but we've also been making some, uh, having to make some extraordinary demands, I think, on our, our professionals. And I think that uh, we're all kind of scrambling to rise to the occasion and respond to the, the task that is before us. And that task has been a really challenging one as we try to value management in an environment where the the cost of the project has gone up, not because of the design of the project, but because of the, the conditions of the economy and the conditions of the um, building construction industry. Um, so I just, I wanna thank everyone for all their hard work. And I wanna thank everyone in this room for all their hard work. And uh, just remind everyone that we are here to work together um, and to uh, try to come out with the best best possible outcome uh, for this project. Um, the Pat, sorry, can I interrupt for one minute? Yeah. Can I just recognize that Lorraine, who everyone's familiar yeah. with from yeah. SMMA is not well. She's tested positive for COVID and it is not feeling well. So in her absence, we have Matt Rice uh, with us today and everyone should know who Matt is. Matt's also in recovery. Was it gallbladder surgery, Matt? So yeah. But He's well enough to join us um, on, from the SMMA team and has um, you know, been part of the team as well. So I just wanna point out that we wish Lorraine well and quick uh, recovery. And thank you, Matt, for stepping in um, to help out today. Thank you, Don. Uh, appreciate you remembering that. I think I'm in denial that COVID is still with us and I'm really sorry that Lorraine has been nailed by it. Um, let's start with approval of the minute meet, meeting minutes from August 18th. Are there any um, corrections or comments on those min meeting minutes? Okay, I see no hands. Uh, uh, yep. were, were they not to be cleaned up and resubmitted to us? Or am I in error on that? Uh, they were, they were cleaned up and re resubmitted on Monday of this week. Yeah, they were sent around earlier this week, Court. Okay, I, I looked for them, couldn't find them. I'll have to abstain. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I, I got your message, Chris, uh, the two, for whatever reason, two misspellings. We will get those fixed. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes of August 18th and August 25th, 
as revised and presented to us with two spelling errors uh, to be corrected as identified by Chris Popeye. Second. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Very nice. Um, do I hear a second? I think I okay. did hear one. I seconded, but if you didn't hear it, someone else can have it. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Uh, do, I, do I do a roll call for this? Yes, unfortunately, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I, I, Alexa? Yes. Court? Yes. Heather? Yes. Frank? I, again, I can't see. I, I got it. He's I saw nodding it. yes. I saw it. Giving a thumbs up. Here? Yes. Don? Yes. Lori? Yes. Pat Johnson? Yep. Uh, me, yes. Chris Popov? Yes. Charlie Parker? Yes. Pat Root? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Steven Stichowski? Uh, Stephen? He's giving a thumbs up. He can't yeah. unmute. All right, unmute. thank you. Um, <laughs> then let's uh, go to correspondence. OK, um, I will be quick, but we certainly had a lot of <coughs> correspondence. Um, we had 38 emails, although I should specify most of them were directed at the select board and copying our committee. Um, they were all along the the same general theme, although two primary themes. One was asking the select board to institute the special town meeting process so that the town can have a say on whether or not we make any more cuts or not. And the other half, the other theme was kind of, um, please institute the town meeting process so that we can protect uh, the, the budget and building as it was. Okay. Um, I, that's a that's a high level summary. So if anybody else having read them all um, wants further detail or wants me to expound further, I can. But th those were the general themes. And everybody should have received um, all of those those emails. So and I, it's really nice to have them all put in one place. Um, thank you to Aaron for doing that. <laughs> okay. So um, we're now we're back to value value management. And um, the expectation I would like to set for today is that, um, well, let me, let me step back a little bit. In review of the, the straw poll, and this was indeed a straw poll, this was a trying to get an understanding of any items that we have general consensus on that we can put behind us. And once we do that, where does that leave us with, with coming up with some options for the voters? Um, at a special town meeting. In review of the straw poll, which we'll go through um, with Ian. Uh, Heather? So, Pat, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I just um, ask us to clarify the straw poll? For anybody who's watching or watching the recording, okay. I don't want it to seem like we had a discussion offline. So can I just quickly explain what the straw poll is and how it fits into open meeting law? Please do. Please okay, do. thank you. So the, thank you. And the, the chair sent out um, what, what looked like a survey, um, the way it fits into open meeting law is that in any uh, public, in any public committee like this, you can ask people to send individual feedback to a specific person or a specific somebody who's collecting all the info. Um, and then that person, as you are about to do now, kind of shares out the info to anyone, everybody. So by doing that, we are not deliberating outside of our public meeting. We're each individually sending an opinion to one person who collects it, and then we discuss it here in the meeting. So that's what happened between last time and now. I just wanted to clarify for the public. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. Thank I, just, you. I just want to reiterate, this wasn't a decision-making, deliberating process. It was trying to, to get our committee to focus on what the items are that um, SMMA and Hill have recommended and we've identified as outside of the ed plan to, to remove or not remove, to accept or reject um, in order to bring down the cost of this project because of the cost um, escalations. So um, what, what my expectation is to, well, so in reviewing it, it was pretty clear that no one on this committee had an appetite for 
accepting enough items to get us down to the original $103 million um, budget. So that, that it, we're, we're still a ways away from that. What I'd like to do is finish our value management process today, this morning, and come up with where we would recommend this building, this, the cost for this building and the building that we would be asking the voters to approve at a special town meeting for um, an additional cost. There would still be the opportunity for um, the voters to, 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 to say, no, we, we don't want anything taken out of it, or no, you can't have additional funds. But I, want, I would like to see if our, our committee can come to a conclusion today on what we are going to uh, instruct the architects and the designers in Hill to, to help us remove from, this, from the cost of this building. Um, so what, with that, I'd like Ian to start to walk us through the, um, the straw poll and, and your presentation. Cool. <clears throat> can you guys see that? Yeah, can you full screen? There we go, there we go, there we go. Uh, so th these are the results of the poll. Um, thank you, Su Susan, for um, putting together the, the Google form that allowed us to get through this here and pull information together. Um, so we were we were the the group Hill was the group that received this information and, and compiled the results. So um, we were able to do that yesterday and uh, apologies for getting out late, but we were working to get this uh wrapped up for you guys uh and summarized in a way that was helpful this morning so um so this just kind of gives the background um as heather was saying uh the google form was filled out in the past two days as a, as a straw poll um and then these are the the um the results and the way that we the way that we categorize this is there's there's three there's three buckets that we put these in basically there's um bm items that um are accepted by the majority vm items rejected by the majority and items that require further discussion so items that that people were kind of on the fence on um that didn't have a majority support so these are these are the three categories um uh 264 994 accepted by majority, uh, five million or shade, shade over five million rejected by the majority, and then two point two that requires further discussion. So, does that does that make sense? So, getting into to the detail here, uh, can I just ask a question? Sorry, Ian. Yeah, are, are we going to discuss these items now as we go through this? Uh, or are we going to go through it and then go back and discuss them? You know, I think that if if people have quick responses or quick questions that are maybe um, you're looking for some kind of a factual question, not a, um, a, a long discussion, we could ask questions while Ian goes through it. But we will be looking at all of the items that that fall in these buckets. Um, yeah, I, afterwards. So, yeah. so we can go through this pretty quickly. I think that's what I think is important is we save the time to go through them. So, uh, we'll let just let Ian go through this. Thanks. Um, so, items with majority support. This is the first bucket. There's there's three items in the first bucket. So, there's the wood bridge removal of the wood bridge. Uh, eliminating environmental graphics within the building and then replacing granite bollards with the concrete filled uh, galvanized steel bollards. So these items, uh, nine out of 13 people supported accepting these value management items. Okay. And these are the individual items here. So these are the, the actual poll results as well as um, 
there was an opportunity for individuals to comment. So these are these are some of the comments uh, recorded as well. And again, thir 13 out of 13 uh, voting members responded. Uh, so we have 100% participation, um, which is fantastic. And, and uh, majority is nine, nine or more out of 13. I don't know how much time you want me to spend on each each one of these items there. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions. The... I think it's, you know, I don't think it needs to be laborious, but I think it, it is important for us to, to, to get some highlights to, to really, you know, kind of for us to all be able to internalize this or think about it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, wood, the wood bridge is the area that we were talking about. Um, the developed area underneath the, the connector bridge um it uh connects two concrete pathways in between the ravine um and the graphics that we were looking at last week so that's that area can i just point out that last comment on the previous slide it's actually on the south side of the building so i'm not sure it actually is in a shady wet rarely yeah. used feature but just want to point that out it's actually on the south side of the building which will see sun all day um environmental graphics um does everyone understand what environmental graphics are just for clarity i was realizing that I'm not i think sure. it would be helpful to give a description yeah i agree don you showed me some examples yesterday that were fairly game changing in my opinion so i don't know if there's a place to show a little bit of an example of what it might look like in a school. Yeah, let me, sorry, I don't have that at the ready. Give me two minutes, literally, but um, I don't know if Matt Rice wants to describe it or you, I, I can. It's basically a celebration of place and student, um, um, it's about like celebrating the, the uniqueness of the school and the community. So I have schools where they celebrate the history of the town or the city, or they celebrate the namesake of the school. Um, so, you know, in a lot of ways, this contributes to student pride. And um, in my practice, we do studies on school safety and this, this as well as visual connectivity inside of the building, um, it is proven to be, you know, a place where students feel safer because they feel like they're part of uh, a community. Can I ask um, people to mute if if they are not speaking? I'm I'm hearing some chatter. Thank you. It Sorry. could also be my children in the background trying to get ready for school. Gotcha, Don. Sorry, <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm muting when I'm uh, not speaking, but I've got children I, trying to get out the door. If I could just summarize the environmental graphics, as I understand them, are a means by which um, a building. Uh, engages the students in their school in a in a meaningful way. So they're not just a um, something that's pretty to put on the walls, but it's intended to minds <coughs> and connect them in the building mm -hmm. school and make their school an environment that they want to be in, that they're curious about, and they want to learn in. So that is not sitting at desks and getting. Um, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but it is a way that has been seen to engage children in their educational environment, which improves outcomes. So Don, I don't know if you have some examples to share. I do. Yep. Um, if Ian will allow me to share the screen, I will. Yep. Um, right. Okay, so like here's an example of a school my firm did down in DC. It's um, all male, mostly African American, and you can see some of the celebration of murals and environmental graphics. And here's here are some more. Um, 
and this is, you can just read it, but the building itself is a teaching tool with art and graphics everywhere that convey the mission and vision of the school and represent prominent black male figures throughout history, artwork depicting prominent men of color, below and left, this one, um, and graphics representing the school's values to the right, which is this um, crossword puzzle and word search, uh, constantly reinforcing the importance of achievement. So, you know, this is a school where um, throughout the building, that was done. I can also show, oh, I don't have it open. Uh, no, let's, let's move on. I think I yeah. think the point has been taken and I wanna make sure we get through, through all of the slides and we have plenty of time to achieve our goal today. Yep, so just a, you know, a little background on that for those that aren't as familiar with what environmental graphics are, so. Uh, for, for the record, Pat, um, nobody's saying that the graphics are not a good idea. Am I correct? The straw poll indicated that they don't have to happen. Right, right, no. exactly. I'm just. Um, Thank you. It's these are the these are the decisions we're going to be making, and you know this is just to understand what it is that we may be um, reducing um, as we go through this process. And and I didn't really understand what I know what environmental graphics are. I know what they are, but I didn't know the words environmental graphics meant that. So, Peter, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, again, I just wanted to understand the process because I feel like we're going through these items with a good description and we're not commenting on them and then we're going to go back and revisit them. It almost seems like either we just go through them real quick and then we come to each one and discuss it or let's take them now and discuss them just in the interest of time, because we've got a lot to do today. Okay, I concur. Let's, uh, Ian, let's take us through as quickly as possible, and then we will go back. And if people can make notes on those slides, they want to go back and revisit. Okay. So <clears throat> this is a acceptance of replacing the granite bollards with concrete filled galvanized steel bollards. So a material change, switching from granite to a galvanized steel bollard with concrete in it. Um, so again, those are, those are the three items that had uh, majority support for accepting. Then we get into uh, majority support for uh, rejecting uh, VM items. So you've got the curtain wall, and I'll, I guess I'll just go through this. So this is, this is five, you know, five five million dollars worth of uh, value here um, that the majority would support rejecting. Uh, first one being the curtain wall, uh, changing that and window glazing from triple to double glaze. So sustainability impacts there, um, EUI impacts uh, to do that. Um, changing some of the exterior wall assemblies um, right now, phenolic is is the basis of design. So changing it to something different in a, uh, a metal composite material. Uh, replacing the folding glass walls uh, with hollow metal frames and, and glazing. So getting rid mm -hmm. of the folding partitions. So this is a reject item. Uh, eliminating the stair roof, the, the roof access. Um, so this would be changing it to alternate treads and a hatch for roof access. Um, removing uh, eight foot tall mesh front storage cabinets at the team commons. So getting rid of storage in the team commons. Limiting skylights in the admin area. Series of skylights. Um, basically deferring or eliminating the existing building demo and abatement scope, which would not allow you to develop the field areas as well. Um, replacing linoleum with VCT, uh, just a material change that has maintenance implications to it. Uh, removing maintenance sheds uh, at the loading dock area. Uh, this is to house uh, equipment. 
eliminating bleachers in the gymnasium, uh, eliminating millwork display cases uh, throughout. And this is 100% elimination. There's another, um, there's another item 72B that has a, a suggested 50% reduction that's also on the table. Uh, reducing the size of the gym. So this was uh, majority support for rejecting this. Um, reducing the size of the auditorium was majority support for rejecting this item. Um, and that's that's the rejection list that had majority support. And then these are the items that require further discussion. So there's, I believe, 13 items here that were uh, not in a, in a majority opinion. And um, we're kind of on the fence for people to, to review and discuss more. So this is related to the advanced lighting controls. Uh, reducing it down from 100% addressable to 60%. Excuse me. Yep. So you've got three camps here. Um, so you use some kind of ratio to put these into three buckets. Um, can, you, can you explain that ratio that uh, dropped this third uh, bucket together for us? Yeah, anything that had eight votes or not votes, eight responses uh, or less in, in support or, or one or the other. So majority is nine out of 13 or more. So nine, 10, 11, or 12, or 13 was majority. Eight or less falls into this last bucket. Nine, nine and up equals majority yep. out of 13. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Matt. I think that while the number of votes is significant, the other thing that's significant is, especially on something like this, and there are many of the others that are in the middle um, that have comments like, need more information, what impact does this have? In other words, where there's a lot of uh, maybe un uncertainty. And so it might, with more information might change the votes in one direction or another. Um, and so I think as we go through these, perhaps it's not appropriate to get into a big discussion qual qualitatively, but if we could just pick uh, the ones that it was, we go along and there'll be more later uh, where, you know, it's really people had to pick yes or no, accept or reject or else the, the poll wouldn't close. But I think there were several where I, I didn't know. The answer was don't know, <laughs> really. Uh, and I suspect, suspect others are in that same position. So Matt, I think you're suggesting that maybe we do take the time as we go through these things, if there's specific additional information that can be provided. Um, and it's not all of them. I mean, many of them we have discussed at length and I think people had more clarity about. It's just that you get ones like this, like the lights there, um, you know, there was this question about, uh, I forget some device on the roof and only later when uh, last night we received the packet with the uh, image of what the thing was, they don't even know what it was, uh, you know, and we were trying to decide whether to eliminate it. Um, so I just have a feeling we, we do now have more context and perhaps, you know, for example, with these lights, we need a little bit more context before people can be certain. Uh, Ian, uh, just a minute, Charlie. Um, Ian, is that, uh, are, are you going to be addressing those questions in future slides or is it reasonable from your point of view to, to take the, some time to provide additional information as we go through this? What, what do you think would be most efficient? Um, I mean, I thought we I thought we had just talked about breezing through this and then circling back to these okay. items to present more information. So I was just trying to get through these slides. Okay. Yeah, it's just that like wait, wait, reject. Would... You could imagine that we would just say, okay, they're rejected. Let's not even discuss them further. But there are a few that I think you know maybe it was just we didn't know. All right, Charlie. If these items are up for discussion, 
I would suggest that we start discussing them or decide when we're going to start discussing them and then decide on each one whether we want to accept or reject. I think talking about the item and then coming back to it, if it's one that's up for discussion, I think it's confusing and probably wasteful of time. I think we should just go on to these, these discussion items and get through them. I don't think there's much magic here in, uh, in what needs to be done. Ian can chime in with, with information on any of the items where we're unclear, and I think we should get going. All right. Is that clear? Yeah. Words, let's get, I think this is along the lines of what Peter was suggesting as well, that we kind of start cutting to the chase on these items. If they're up for discussion, let's start discussing them and let's decide on them. So, so let's, Ian, you've gone back to, to the, the, the items with majority support are accepted or rejected by the majority. I think the suggestion is to stay with those middle I don't want to spend 20 minutes deciding how we're going to do this. I'm not sure I know the best way to do it. I just, I think, let's let's go through those middle items really quickly, really quickly, and then go back and discuss them so that everybody has at least seen the ones that are in the middle and not, not go through uh, asking questions. Peter, do you have a better uh, idea? Do you, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time just debating how we're going to do this. Well, I, I was just going to make a suggestion. I think Charlie is right. If Ian wants to go through real quick, but we're going to have to talk about each one of these. So why not just get into the discussion on it? And then I was going to suggest on the items that have been rejected by the majority, we go through those real quick and ask anybody if they want to discuss them or if we are comfortable with the rejection and the same thing with the, the ones that have been approved so that we can, we can spend the time on the ones that are only people really want to discuss. So <clears throat> that's, that's it. Do people feel like they had the chance to look at all of this beforehand anyway, so they just need to go to this second step that Peter and Charlie are proposing? Or do people want to go through this to get a high level view of what, uh, let me just ask how many people want us to keep going through this quickly? Quickly, just put up your hands. Or you could even just show us the high level, the, the summary slide again, so we can all look at the list and know what's on the list, and then we can go back to them in more detail. Is that a compromise? Sure. Yeah. Good, good morning, folks. Um, Sue McCann. I just put in the chat the items. I just went through the slides really quickly. And in the chat, I identified uh, 45, 52, 56, 74, and 82, where there were comments that said, I need more information. Um, so if, if you want to highlight those, I, I just thought I'd, I would pull those out. But um, I just thought I'd share that. From a process point of view, can't we have the new information when we hit the item? I don't think you want separate steps to do this. If we need information, when an item comes up, people should ask for it and it should be provided. That's correct. That's why there's Great. a whole yeah. separate slideshow of information. So, so if you start with the ones that we accepted, a whole separate slide presentation with information. So, let's just let's just okay. move through. Pat, this. Pat, why don't you go to the top and and take those three, and why don't we agree on those three and get those out of the way? <clears throat> yep. Okay. So just, just to speak out a little bit here, the way I was envisioning this is that if you have a majority opinion on things, those should be pretty cut and dry unless someone speaks up and says, no, let's, let's talk about a specific item more. Okay, so you could do one vote for 
the accepted items, one vote for the rejected items, and then start getting into individual items that are on the fence. Well, does anybody have any problem with the VM items accepted by the majority? And if no one speaks up, I think we should accept them and move on. <clears throat> I don't think we need a vote. Yes, I have I th questions. I think you need to vote on all these. Heather? Um, thanks. So it, I, I don't want to slow the process down, but we, we did just hear Lori, the head educator in this whole experience, <laughs> say that she saw some examples of environmental graphics that could be game changing. Um, and I don't think that's something that we should ignore. Um, I, I'd like to hear more about that and how it's game changing and what if we take this away, what we're really doing here, because I'm concerned about that. Okay, you'd like more information about item 70? Yes, please. Matt, Matt, can you guys speak to what's being proposed at this stage for environmental graphics for this specific building? I, yeah, it, yeah, Ian, I think what we have right now, because we're still relatively early in the process of development of what those environmental graphics are, um, we have an allowance value, which accounts for a certain square footage of environmental graphics that would be um, along the lines of what Don showed examples of um, and sort of what you heard descriptions of as well. Um, they're, they're really something that when we get to the final design is something that will be um, sort of um, growing from the interactions that we have with the staff and the students and the community um, to really figure out what what are the graphics, what are the images that will resonate um, with everybody and to try to achieve um, the goals of making it uh, really reflective of the life of the community and the school um, as much as possible. So we don't have the specific graphics developed yet. Um, that's something that we engage in during the construction document phase typically. Um, so it is, is that allowance uh, number that we're currently working with. Matt, if I might uh, add here is that um, as a concept, what we would think is that maybe throughout the common spaces of the building, we would amplify Concord's history of literature. And then also within the education team, we would reinforce the sense of teaming. So those are some of the early ideas that we would be exploring. Like you've seen, we've integrated some of the topography of Concord in some of the flooring patterns and things like that, we think we would just reinforce those other aspects of the, you know, kind of stated intentions of the uh, educational team. Um, if you want my personal professional opinion here, these, these are graphics that, that are important to the user experience in a building. Um, you know, it, it really, uh it really enhances that experience in in any in any building that you're in um especially in a school uh setting so um for the amount of money that you're saving here um i would think it would be uh something that you would you would want to keep in the design so since i brought up the question i'm gonna <laughs> jump back in and weigh in and say i'm strongly against getting rid of this. I'm against accepting it as VM. And if we were to vote it in, I, I would want to start asking to make sure that if this is our option B that we're bringing to special town meeting, that we still have an option A that does not include some of these things. Because I think something like this is central to the school that we are trying to build. We've talked about student experience and we've talked about building an environment for learning for the next 50 years plus. And I feel like to take away something like this that is so central to that for $58,000 is not a smart idea. Court. Yeah, uh, I believe that uh, votes are wise and necessary to put some of these questions to bed. Um, I think we should note that uh, we are focusing a great deal on an item that is uh, representing about 1% of the budget gap that we are supposedly examining here. I think it's a given that uh, this committee is not going to uh, be able to meet that budget gap, but we're trying to do a good faith effort. 
Um, and again, votes would help us uh, let the community know where we land. And the elimination of the graphics is indeed uh, true for uh, value management, but it's not true for the building, uh, because I think we all agree that this could uh, come later, as it often does in, in construction. Chris? Just a quick question. The cost estimate is based on hiring artists and so forth to uh, actually perform the work. Is that right? So I think, Chris, that what the cost represents is the actual production of the material. So the design of the content is actually something that our team um, will engage in through the construction document process. We'll um, show that as part of the documents. And then um, it's really the, the applied material, um, whether it has relief to it, whether it's two-dimensional, that's what the cost represents, the, the $50,000 straight allowance. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering whether this is a kind of project that can be done by students and staff and so forth as opposed to some of somebody else but you know yeah I, li I like environmental graphics at some point for sure peter yeah so as we go through this process something that's very important to me to hear is the view from the professionals and from laurie and her team on any items that they that are being considered for vm like this one that may impact the educational experience or have maintenance issues or are otherwise something that they feel strongly should not be accepted. So that's, I'm not a professional. I wanna hear from them on this and that's gonna be very helpful um, for, for me. This one, uh, I, I definitely feel like we should uh, keep it and, and not get it out. So I think we need to, to vote on it. I'd make a motion to remove it. I'd also, like to hear if they're out of these other two, whether there's any strong feelings from those folks. Thank you, Peter. I think that's okay. So I would like to know if anyone else has anything else in this uh, accepted by majority list that they want to argue should not be accepted. Um, and then we can take a vote on removing or keeping them and then put it to bed. So are there any other items 33 or 79 that people feel strongly need to be um, included in the budget. Heather. So I, I might, I know I'm a minority here. I feel that the wood bridge is important to the connection to nature. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and argue about it a lot because I have a feeling I'll be outvoted. Um, but what I do wanna understand is when we, are voting now to accept or reject things, are we talking about our plan B? And is there still going to be a plan A presented at special town meeting that does not have some of these cuts? I just wanna understand what exactly we're voting, which version we're voting this for. So pl plan A is the current design as it okay. sits, which is the 107.2 million. Uh, what about the, the plan, million that's been cut, no. we've agreed to some cuts already. I thought those were part of that, incorporated into the plan A, no? That's that's correct. So okay. that's that's this here, the 1.1 that was already accepted on okay. 8.4. So that's that's done, that's behind us. That's okay. that's what we're calling plan A, 107. Okay, and that will still be presented at town meeting, correct? Uh, I mean, we, we had discussed three options here, a plan right. A, which was that plan C, which is back to budget, right. which we looked at last week that had all the yellow highlighted items that got you back to a budget. And then this would be for plan B. So this is your best, this is the committee's best foot forward towards a middle ground. Okay. Pat, may I make a comment on, on these, these options? Uh, yeah. I yeah, I think I think it's important for us to not get confused over what we're really focusing on here. Uh, I think what we're trying to do is come up with the optimal set of, of attributes that we need in this building. If environmental graphics is one of them, we ought to put it in there and say we accept it uh, as something we want in the building, except maybe the wrong word. We want to retain it in the design. If we want to retain it, it's what we believe in and it's what goes into option B. I think trying to sort out whether we're gonna have stuff in which column at this point, very difficult. So I think that we ought to stay focused on 
the optimal attributes of the building to meet the educational plan and to provide a safe and secure, secure building and not which column these things go in. Uh, I, for one, uh, am swayed by the comments about the environmental graphics. It's a small amount relative to the others. And I, I heard that what the professionals had to say, and I would say we ought to hold on to it. And uh, again, uh, let's, uh, let's make a decision about whether that's optimal for the building and, uh, and then move on. Yep. If, if, if the desire here is to take this out of the accepted list and maintain it in the design, you, you would be voting on this. Accept number 33, reject number 70, accept number 79. Could I, I, I agree yeah. with Charlie and I, I think both of the others, I, I did vote yes, reject, you know, yes, take the VE on some of the items, but none of these three were on my list of things that I would accept because I think that they're required for the design of a school that we, the committee was charged to build by the town. The town expects us to build a, an appropriate middle school for the original requirements and these things would be required to do so. And I, even the bollards, I know we had a long discussion about bollards and, and meeting the same standard of material for the bollards that is at the high school, but the high school is out of sight of people driving by, people that drive on Old Marlboro Road. Uh, it's, it's a highly trafficked area. I, that was my comment. I, I think this is a front and center, something that is presented to passers-by from other towns and and it's important that we have a, a nice looking uh front doorway and the the granite would achieve that um and so i and then and then the wood bridge my, my connection to nature comment uh, I, I stand behind that i think that it's a nice elegant feature and if you you're sitting in the amphitheater looking at a performance the bridge is behind that's the backdrop i think it's a it's a, a very beautiful thing and i think we ought to keep that as well but to go to Charlie's point, I think the, the number two, the plan B, I, we all have to know that that is the plan that we may or may not say is the, the recommended approach. But if we're going to vote for it, I think we have to be sure that we're achieving the original intent of what this committee was was developed to, to product, produce to the town. Uh, so I, I want to be cautious on, on any of this. All right, so let's, we, we, we need to make, we, we need to come out somewhere at the end of the day today. We need to have our building that we can live with as a committee. So I'm gonna suggest we go through, all right, let's just start to vote on, let's have some discussion and then we will vote on these VM items accepted by the majority. Do we want them to be included in Plan B or not included in Plan B, and then be done with it. So right now we have we have taken out the environmental graphics from this, or we have suggested that the environmental graphics be taken out. I've heard a lot of support for that. Can we? Can someone put together a proposal to vote on these VM items as? being permanent parts of our value management as, as we see them on the screen in front of us, or do, or let's see if we've got a, a majority vote on that. If you want to start chipping away, I move that uh, the committee accept the value management items 33 and 79 as listed. Do I hear a second? Could, if there's discussion, could we just do them one by one? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, withdraw my motion. I move that we accept 33. Thank you, Court. We'll need a new second. I'll second. Okay, um, do we have some discussion? All right then um, I'm gonna call a vote on. So the vote is that we accept item 33. Uh, all, and what you're voting on is yes to accept, no to not accept. 
Have I got this right? Except and uh, as VM, thus it's removed from the project for purposes of moving it in in the recommendation package later. Yes. Yeah. Alexa. No. Court. Yes. Heather. No. Frank. I, I'm sorry, I can't see Frank. He's... Thumbs up or thumb down, thumbs down. Yes, it, wait, we can't, see, you're too close. Back it up a little. There you go, thumbs down, he's a no. No. Okay, um, Peter. No. Dawn. No. Lori. No. Matt. Yes. Pat, no. Chris. Yes. Okay. Um, Charlie. Yes. Matt Root. Yes. Steven Sashesky. Clarification a no would be to keep it in the project, right? Yes. Oh, yes. no. All right. Um, So um, I believe that it is removed from a value management item. So we will keep it in the project. Okay. I'm gonna put it in terms that I understand here. So we're rejecting this item. It's, it's remaining in the project. Remaining in the project, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Court. We accept item 70, environmental graphics, uh, as a VM item uh, under the conditions that uh, be considered uh, valuable for uh, some later date after construction. Second. All right, uh, Alexa? No. Court? Yes. Heather? No. Frank? Someone's going to have to tell me. Looks like he's a yes. All right. Um, Peter? No. Dawn? No. Lori? No. Matt Johnson? Yes. Uh, Pat? No. Chris Popov? Yes. Charlie Parker? No. Matt Root? No. And Stephen Sashesky? Stephen? No. no. One, two, three, four. I have nine, four, Pat. Nine, four? Okay. So um, we reject taking that out of the project. All right. Uh, I move that we accept item 79, replacing granite bollards with concrete filled galvanized steel bollards. Second. Discussion, I'd like later on to look at the uh, number of uh, bollards, whatever the construction uh, materials might be. Okay. Uh, Are we in discussion now? Discussion, Matt, do you have some? Yeah, I mean, I would like to note that all of the artist renditions that we've seen of the site do not illustrate the bollards. And that if you think about putting that whole row of bollards in front of the building, the aesthetic impact is going to be pretty significant. Um, I also don't understand the bollards that are down the median strip in, the, in that bus lane area. It just is a, a, a forest of bollards. I, I don't understand it, especially relative to all of our other buildings. It, it, it's a, unprecedented. Um, Hill or Mike, somebody want to explain that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, uh, the, the bollards are set. So um, all the curb conditions at the drop-offs are all flush conditions. We don't use a six inch raised curb. Um, 
for, for accessibility conditions and for accessibility reasons. So all those areas are flush granite. There's, there's no raised granite. So at those flush conditions, we try to create a protective zone for the students. Um, we use that at different types of projects. We use different types of materials. Here we chose granite because it's part of the, the whole idea of uh, connecting this building with nature and natural materials as much as possible. Thus, that's the original design intent with granite. Uh, the bollard spacing is set so that a car can't get through in between the bollards. Uh, it's a typical spacing that we use at every project. Um, and it's a typical detail we use at every project. The reason why there's so many of them here, quite honestly, is because there's, you know, we, we're, we're trying to accommodate 18 buses here. Um, and the ones down the center are because, uh, please keep in mind that there are two lanes of buses um, especially at uh, afternoon pickup, those there will be two lanes of buses. So what we're trying to do is create a safe pedestrian space in the center of those two buses, uh, those bus areas. So that's why you see that row of granite bollards uh, in the center as well. So you think there's a risk that bus will careen off of the lane, or I, I don't understand why that center. I mean, again, buses are going to be standing there. People would be getting in and out. I, I'm still yeah. lost. Well, I, I mean, I think careening uh, is probably a little too strong of a of a term, but um, you know, the student safety is always going to be paramount for us when we're designing these spaces. Um, it may not always be buses there too. There may be events. You know, we don't, we have, we don't have any control about how the site is going to be used um, once the design is finished. If there are large events, there could end up being. Um, uh, you know, just regular car parking there for large events at the auditorium at the gymnasium it may or may not always be buses. So um, I'm, I'm always uh, very conservative when it comes to designing for the safety of the students. So that's that's the may, reason may why I, yeah. May I make a comment, Pat? Wait, wait a minute. Let me um, uh, let's see. Chris and then Don and then Charlie. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Matt. I'm still confused about the numbers. <laughs> and the interval spacing along the corridor for what's primarily bus parking. I, I, I think I begin to understand why you need a barrier so a bus would not travel across, although bus drivers are pretty good about keeping in line there. Uh, but I'm kind of lost if you say, well, it might be parking after hours with other vehicles. Well, then that same problem would exist in the general parking lot um, toward Old Marmoral Road. And also with the front of the building too, I want to get a sense of the, the spacing there because I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure you need as many bollards in order to provide enough protection from anybody careening into the sidewalk or the building. So can I suggest, um, Michael, if you could explain um, or just uh, document for us because we're not the professionals building this, why one chooses to have that many bollards in, in these kinds of projects, just to, you know, a, a succinct summary that backs up why we would, because we could question everything. Um, yeah, of course. So a typical parking space is, you know, is either nine by 18 or 10 by 20. Um, anything larger than that, we feel like a car can get through there. So we typically space our bollards 10 feet on center. The idea being that a car, now, of course, a car is mostly going to be coming at it at an angle, typically, but theoretically, a car could fit between if we space the bottles and say 15 feet on center or 20 feet on center, then it'd be very easy for a uh, passenger <laughs> vehicle to be able to, to get between there and get up onto the sidewalk. Okay. Again, rem rem keeping in mind that these are flush curb conditions. They're not curbed. They're not six inch reveal curb conditions. So it's just this, it's, it's just a, a flat surface from the, uh, from the drive aisle to the sidewalk. But why is it flush across the full width of the building? It's flush across the over with the building to keep, we, our experience has been uh, to keep them uh, a flush condition, one for accessibility purposes and two also for, for tripping purposes, especially with younger students at maybe at a high school or something like that. We typically do it there too, but I, I think at a, as you get a little older, it's a little bit different, but typically for elementary schools and middle schools, we try to create a flush condition for the kids getting in and out of the cars. So there's nothing to trip on or or you know, turn an angle or something like that. It also works better for I just don't think any of our too. schools has this now. That so I just no, they, they how don't. we've gotten through this far. Actually, no, no buildings in Concord have any bollards. If you look at if you look at the at the courthouse, if you look at at uh, all of the elementary schools, 
you look at the high school, high school has 11 bollards along the front entrance way, uh, spaced two or three feet apart. Otherwise, there are no bollards at CCHS, no bollards at, at BD. We don't have bollards in Concord. So I, I think that's probably a pretty fair statement, maybe a slight overstatement, but we really don't have any of these. So okay. we're doing something different Pat, here. Pat, can I weigh in on some of the conversations that happened that haven't been referenced yet? Yeah. Number one was Justin and I weighing in on our concerns about the students and their nature to jaywalk essentially. And we're trying to drive student traffic in certain directions. That's especially true in the <coughs> parallel lane of bus parking. We don't want them cutting between buses. And second of all, the police chiefs weighed in very strongly about the presence of bollards across the front of the school and his belief that those are deterrents, even as a visual deterrent to even psychologically deter someone from trying something. So that's that's where most of that came from. So, so um, we, do we but do I didn't install realize we them on talking. all our other buildings then? I, wait, 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 Matt, Matt, wait a minute. Let's keep our hands up and let's not debate whether or not we should install this in all of our other buildings in Concord. If the what Lori has given us are a couple of facts. The police chief recommended this. So that's the police chief. The schools would like this. They <laughs> have to do it, but the schools believe that this would improve student safety. I don't think we need to get into a debate about the, the value of ballads when we've heard from our police chief and we've heard from our educators. Peter. Well, yeah, I, I was just going to say, it seems like there's a more discussion to happen on this one. Can we just pull this right off and, and table it for now? Because it, it seems like people have more questions, as do I, now that we're really getting into it. So I the design, this is more of a design question. Well, the design right. question the, the, is the material that the bollards are made of, not whether or not we have bollards. Well, I we should talk about whether Charlie, they should be granted Charlie, or not. Charlie, let me call on you. Don? Don? Don, your hand is All up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to find my mute button. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it was minimized. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I was going to just comment that uh, a flush condition may not be necessary the entire length of the building. Um, just, and I, I'm speaking as me as a per personal, you know, you all know what I do for the state as far as accessibility. Um, but I also want to recognize that that's a very long length of a uh, flush condition as well as the buses. But student safety should be number one. At first glance, 88 bollards does seem significantly high. Um, I just went to one of my projects, we have nine at the front of our building. So it's a different condition. It's, you know, um, and it's younger students, but I just want to acknowledge, but the spacing is probably uh, about what Mike described, maybe a little bit farther apart. So for what it's worth, um, maybe this is worth taking another look at Mike and either putting traditional curbs and elevating the students so that one one in a vehicle would hit the curb before the student, um, but then also having these conversations and recognition of the police as well as um, the, you know, the people managing all the students coming in and out every day. I think that's it's important to hear their voice, as Lori mentioned. Charlie, do you have something new to say? Yeah, I, yeah, I have something to say about the granite. I I don't see how granite is a is a requirement for the project. If we're going to have bollards, we're going to have bollards. Uh, there are no granite bollards in Concord, that is for sure, uh, except in, in areas where you, you really need a, a one or two that, that are for beauty. But to have this number of, of bollards uh, and certainly the bollards in front of the building as granite, just don't see the need. The ones at the high school are, are, are steel. Um, the ones at the, at the throw center are steel. I'm sorry, at the uh, Walden uh, Visitor Center or Steel. Uh, you know, I just don't, I think it's a mistake to, to, to lard up the project with wonderful things like that, but expensive. And I, I would like to make a motion, if I can, that we, I, I've heard that we could possibly consider alternatives to bollards, but we could, Sounds to me like we could make a decision about what those, if we keep the bollards, what those material, the materials should be. 
so that we can at least get something on the table that we're able to reduce from the from the cost of the budget and then instruct our as Don has suggested to look again at the curbing and perhaps the number of bollards but that we could at least stick to the question of whether they should be steel or our granite at this point that's what I'm suggesting uh, I'm that's not fine making a suggestion court I, I concur thank you so um, I move that item 79. Um, I believe we have a motion on the floor and uh, it has a second. Okay, so can we vote on this one? And again, so everybody's clear, it's about the materials with the number and other related details to uh, be uh, deserving of further attention. All right, Alexa. We, we're voting on the original motion. Yeah. So I'd be a no. In, yeah. Court? Yes. Heather? Oh, man. Uh, I guess yes on this one. Frank? Someone's going to have to let me know. Thumbs up, yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. Dawn? Yes. Lori? Yes. Matt Johnson? Yeah. Pat, yes. Chris Popov? Yes. Charlie Parker? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Steven Sajewski? Yes. So it looks like that passes. We can keep that on our VM items accepted. Okay. All right. Whoa, so maybe this is the best way to go. Let's just go through the list and see where we go. Let's just start voting on these things. Yep. Any, any discussion on any of these items? These are, these are rejected by majority in the poll. You just give us a moment. Did we vote all three of the accepted? Yes, we voted two. Sorry, I missed that. So good. Let's go back. Oh, you rejected number 33, rejected number 70, and accepted number 79. Correct. Yeah. Um, I want you what could we speak to the millwork display cases? Uh, this is eliminate. Is there any other option to reduce? What's the what's yeah, the, there's another item court that will be discussed you. later. Very good, thank you. Appreciate it. Millwork is 72. Does anyone need more? Oh, I see your yeah. hands up, Pat. Yeah, I see Matt, Peter, Charlie. Hey, Matt. So my only uh, comments on this one are 81 and 82. I, I was that is there a option that's reduction, but not by this amount, right? That these these both are the full <laughs> the maximum reductions, if you will, uh, short of eliminating the item uh, from the school. And so I, it seemed to me that a more modest reduction on either of these could be feasible um, without, you know, cutting this far. Peter? I uh, just uh, wanted to have a quick discussion on 59. It's a very small item, but uh, any skylights I've ever put in are maintenance issues. And, and I just wanted to know the value of those. If, if administration feels like they'll provide a lot of natural light then I'm in favor but otherwise I'm not sure we need them. Laura you want to comment on? Yeah. Thank yeah you. there are some internal office spaces there that have no exterior windows so would not have any natural light without the skylight so that was our 
rationale. This, this is what we're looking at here. Do we know what offices those are? It's it's a combination of counselors, administrators. I'm not exactly sure who's where, but it's the counseling and administrative suite. So those offices without skylights would be comparable to our high school guidance? Yeah, which we hear about <laughs> as a as a as a wish that had happened. All right, can you uh, just uh, whoever is in those offices are in those offices all day. These all day with kids coming and going to them. Sure. Yep. Thank you. Charlie. The, the rough end number 74 rough end for sound systems. Oh, well, let's do you have any questions or uh, anything on the uh, skylight? Well, that, that, that's oh, no, not on the skylights. I'm, I'm done with that. No, we're, I'm fine with I that. I do, Pat. Okay, Don. I, I was in favor of keeping them for full disclosure, but I just want to point out if you could go back to that graphic, Ian. It's actually um, kind of on the north side of the building and could be in shadow from that second story above it as I'm looking at it. So just want to point out there, you know, there, it'll still draw in light, but I don't know that it'll be direct sunlight like I'm getting <laughs> today. So the, the south is kind of upper left corner, if I'm correct. Matt, feel free to matter. Um, Mike, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but um, so... I don't know that there'll be direct sunlight, but there will definitely be natural sunlight. And I wonder if that's too close to that vertical uh, wall next to it, by the way, that looks really, um, yeah. So that could be bringing shadow, you know, that you wouldn't necessarily get direct sunlight unless it was like high in the sky, uh, summertime. But I'm all in favor of natural light and regularly occupied spaces is a term that we often use where people are in there for more than an hour of duration. So I just want to point out the location of it, north, south, and potentially shadowing. But as long as everyone's aware of that, this will still draw natural light. It just won't be direct sunlight. Chris? Dawn covered most of what I was going to say. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, I think on maintenance, these are probably going to be fixed skylights uh, and Russ may be able to weigh in, but the fixed skylights will probably be easier to maintain over time than operable skylights. All right, so uh, do we want to weigh it? Is there any other comments on this? All right, Charlie. Can I move to item 74? Yeah. So item 74, I thought was was to move the expense out of the out of the project numbers that we're dealing with today over to FF and E. And if we're rejecting that, that means we want to keep that expense in the in the current plan. Is that is that what what this says? Someone's gonna to have to explain that. I can't explain. Ian, can you explain what we're trying to do with item 74 here? What this means, implications? Um yeah, this has uh, implications to move from the project to FF and E. So if we reject it, then we keep the money in the project. That's right. So if we accept it, we would move it over to FF and E, and we'd save 125 off this budget. <laughs> You're still paying for it as part of the total project. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what the, the item says what it says. No, I'm, so, so you're, you're moving you're, over to you're moving hard cost to soft cost is what you're doing. It's still it's still part of the total project budget, but but you're you're just buying it from a different line item in the budget. Well, yeah, but you have a, a budget. You you've got a cap on the other budget too, right? You can't exceed it. Uh, we have a cap on the total project budget. Yes. So you're saying item 74 is irrelevant. It doesn't make any difference. Either way, we have to pay for it. Why have why have it in the FF? Why have it in the VE list then? You yeah, I mean alter, alternatively, you you could take it completely out of the project if if that is the desire. So right now you're just shifting money around. Well, well who put these VEs together? Did you put them together? They were why is that, why is that even by... on the list? Uh, Dawn, do you have a, a comment to... Just um, uh, in not being the professional in the room, 
Sounds like this was a reduction that you'd have a portable system that could be moved into classrooms as opposed to a hardwired in the building, base building construction cost, if I'm understanding it correctly. So there would be fewer because in the in the base draw, and Matt, if you know more and can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that the, the 125 hardwires it into every single learning space, right? That's what we typically do. We put it in the ceiling, it's hardwired by the electrician and there's a speaker system that's in the ceiling permanently versus a one or two bought out for the project that are mobile, that are brought into rooms as students need them. The downside of that is that you're um, pointing out students that need them, you're, you're making them special or the classrooms in which they are learning special as opposed to their ability to learn in any learning space throughout the building. So that's my understanding. If you were to fully take it out, um, I would not propose that. You need at least 5%, no, uh, no less than one room provided per code uh, for the audible systems. Um, I think it's important to have. I think students, a lot more students need it than we think. Uh, there are typically background noises, people talking, um, ambient noise that could be a distraction that one might not be able to hear from the back of the room. Not necessarily that one, you know, needs, um, uh, so it might be certain classrooms need that. So just for what it's worth, I think that's the change, Charlie, is from hardwired to mobile. Therefore, there would be fewer. Therefore, the reduction in the what is it, one twenty-five? Okay, my, yeah, my, my apologies. I was missing the essence of that. So it, it it's hardwired to mobile, and there is a cost savings. This this was put on the log by SMMA, so I was trying to understand. Yeah, I, I didn't understand what the item meant either. I thought it was rough it in now. We'll finish it off later. That's what it's read like to me. So. Um, I guess I don't know. Yeah, if that's the case. Can you can you guys, Matt? Do you do you have background on this? Can you clarify what the intent yeah. is here? Yep. You know, I think Don did a fantastic job outlining yeah. exactly what it is. Is that it's a, moving to a portable approach, um, and so because it is portable, you don't need to provide one for every classroom. You certainly could, but that would not result in any savings. I don't know the exact number of portable systems that, that the savings here represents, but we could identify what that is for everybody. Okay. So you'd be going from a hardwired system that is part of the construction cost to pushing this to FF&E as a portable system and saving $125,000. So there is a savings reduction. That's correct. Alexa, my question, so I have a, a child with minor hearing loss, would then that put the onus on the teacher to know when there is a child present with hearing loss to know to bring that portable system in as, you know, as they're also managing like a million IEPs and that kind of thing? Is that what that would is what is that part of what this would mean? That is one of the downsides. Yes, Alexa. There's some coordination that would have to take place. I mean, it probably involves administration as well because there's a certain number they need to be balanced throughout the school in terms of which classrooms they are in for any given period, right? Okay. Um, and, that, and then I think it, it does actually go to the sort of the calling out of that um, that disability, if you will, um, for those students. Um, and so it just it makes more of of whatever condition they're dealing with, um, which is a downside, I would say. Great. Thank you. Charlie. Oh, sorry, I, I, I can take my hand down. Uh, I'm all set. I'm all set with uh, just leaving this as is in the in the plan. Lori. Yeah, I just want to, I mean, to Alexa's point, it, part of the universal design mindset is that amplification being readily and easily available everywhere benefits students wherever they are. Honestly, it benefits all students, not just those with hearing loss or such, because the amplification is just easier for everybody to hear. Um, I do, it's a one-time opportunity to hardwire the building it's never the same, you know, you only get that chance once. If we miss it, we we never can go back. So I'm gonna advocate that this stays in. Are there any of the any other items on the VM items rejected by the majority that anyone wants further clarification on? Charlie. 
So I want to be sure that we're going to come back to item 81 and 82 at some point with, right. small, with a smaller reduction. Right. Right now, we're only voting on whether to reduce the gym size by to, to reject reducing the gym size by 3,500 square feet in the auditorium by by whatever it is, reducing it by third. We're only voting on that. We can always add something else in later. Okay, I'm okay with that. So do I hear a motion to, that the committee will accept this list of VM items rejected by the majority and keep these items in the budget that we will be including as plan B. So moved. Uh, Court, are you seconding that or are you, you're, you're on mute, Court. Thank you. I, I apologize. Could you give us another 60 seconds on 52? Just for, for my understanding, we are eliminating stair access uh, which tells me there's going to be a ladder instead from the exterior. But then it says that we're adding a, a stair and hatch for roof access. So we're, we're eliminating it, but we're not eliminating it. It's a little confusing to the, the lay person here. Point of order. Can I second it so we can have discussion? Thank you. Yeah, okay, Don. thank you for seconding the motion. Mm -hmm. I think, could you go back to the list real quick, um, Ian? Sorry. I think an alternating stair is similar to a, to a ladder court, but it's angled. I think the, the language there may be confusing. So eliminate stair access, reduce the height of it, and add an alternating tread stair and hatch. So those are typically not as, not straight up and down like a ladder, but they're um, somewhat angled and they kind of have alternating as opposed to one rung that you step on. They're awkward to, <laughs> to go up. I have one in a project right now. I climbed it the other day just for fun. Um, so that I think that's what it's proposing is that you don't have your traditional stair that, that continues up with the structure of it, but that it leads to almost like a, imagine an attic roof hatch, like a one that you pull down, the old school that you pull down from the right. ceiling. Some might have those in their older homes. And then it kind of gives you this angled ladder, if you imagine that it might have alternating treads though, and then it takes you to a to a hatch. I so, think that's what they're proposing versus building the structure of another um, story to the stair. Yeah. Russ, can you can uh, do you want to weigh in on this? I yes. Um, you know, Don just did an excellent job explaining what it is. So picture trying to carry a box of filters, belt, motor. It's, I do not recommend you do this. It's, uh, it's not safe. Something like um, this. It, it, correct, yeah. If you Good have visual. the, if the um, seeing that all the infrastructure is going to be up on the roof, we need good access to get up there to perform plan maintenance. Yep. Thank you. Steve? I believe the fire department would require uh, access from the interior of the building out to the roof of the building. And therefore this is ultimately the minimum requirement that we're looking at um, as the alternative to the stairs. All right, any more discussion or can we vote? I just had one other point. Sorry, my hand was up. I just had one other point. If we're talking about all the amount of solar panels up there in the future as well, that should be worth considering access to and maintenance of and replacement for. So just another, you know, more components that folks will need to get on the roof for other than just your traditional units and filters and maintenance. So if just to summarize, if you if you reject this item, it remain the stair this stair tower remains as is no change otherwise you would cut it down and provide the alternating treads and roof hatch so rejecting this item keeps this as is right and that's what this vote is to keep this as a rejected to keep, to keep it as is yep yeah Lori. I just wondered if we could repeat the motion okay. so that we're all clear on what we're voting. I mean, could could I in fact rephrase the motion 
to reject VM items 29, 45, 50, 52, 56, 59, 62, 65, 68, 71, 72A, 74, 81, and 82. Second. Any discussion? Just point of order, you've got a different motion on the floor. So that either needs to be an amendment or that first one has to be withdrawn. I'll withdraw my initial motion. And I second in both, so obviously. <laughs> hey, you want to restate the motion one more time? Alexa, do you have a question? I do, just so a vote yes would be to affirm these rejections and a vote no would be to reject <clears throat> these rejections. Right. Okay. So a vote yes will take these out, will keep these items in, in our budget. Great, thank you. Court. Yeah, forgive me. I uh, hate to take the time, but I need to see that image again, please. I have a question maybe for Dawn or one of the professionals. So did I hear it correctly that the traditional stair access to the roof is the, uh, the feature that requires this height of that shaft? And that's, and were those traditional stairs not to be there that this height of that block would no longer be uh, be that prominent. Is that what you told me? That's correct. So why would we be building a, a traditional stair to a height vastly higher than everything else in the building? I just need to understand it. I'm not challenging just, it, I just don't uh, get it. Court, can I just point out that stair takes you up another story as if you're climbing a regular stair and then there'll be a regular door that you basically step over a curb to yeah, get the, onto the roof the, the as opposed to climbing a hatch and lifting it and climbing up out of the roof does that make sense you're coming out horizontally like you would yeah, a normal doorway right. so, so you really like a little vestibule you can stand in okay. so we've got a, we've got a box the up there for the sole purpose of access to the rear yep there'll be a door on the back side which isn't obviously illustrated here that would one could walk right out onto the roof with all the filters, all the tools, all the things that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, if you yeah, I think I could see it in there. You're. You can you can start to see it here. There is the there it is. You're right in the middle. Right yep. Oh, it's a double door. Is it? I can't yeah. tell. Yeah. Double. Oh, very nice. Sorry to interrupt. Is the elevator overrun part of that shaft? It, it would be part of the shaft, yes, but it's not the driver in terms of the height, the door and the, the threshold clearance and sort of snow clearance as well. That's really what's driving it. The elevator overrun is what, like four feet above, maybe the roof plane approximately, but it would be, but it, I don't know. It, it is. So there's, there's a chance that there might have to be, say, a two foot projection or something like that um, above the roof just to um, adapt to the elevator <laughs> override if we went with the alternating tread stair. Um, so there would be some projection, but I think it would be considerably less than what is shown right now. The door um, and the clearance is driving it. If that makes sense. Okay. I think we might be ready to vote. All right. So um, a yes vote accepts these VM items rejected by the majority. So as Matt listed them, we accept keeping all of these items in our budget. That would be a yes vote. OK, Alexa? Yes. Court? Yes. Heather? Yes. Frank? Thumbs up. Thank you. Peter? Yes. Dawn? Yes. Lori? Yes. Matt Johnson? Aye. I'm sorry, Matt, I didn't hear you. Matt Johnson? Yeah, aye. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was hearing yeses and not an I. Yeah. Um, Pat Nelson, yes. Chris Popov? Yes. 
Charlie Parker? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Steven Stachewski? Yes. Thank you. Um, so we are now able to move into those things that people weren't particularly sure of. Um, I believe we have about, what was it, Ian, about $2 million worth of uh, items that we can still go through. That's right. Let's just go through that list um, and see if we can answer people's questions. Yep. I want to remind everyone, Susan McCann provided the numbers in the chat of items that had questions. Oh, shall we start there? Should we just start there? Could you put the item up? So the, the, with, the pie, with the pie chart, there you go. That would be an easier way to go through them. Okay, so it's item 42, 52, 56, 74, and 82. Right off the bat, people expressed that they needed more information about those. Did you say 42? Because there's no 42 on here. I'm sorry, 45. 45. There's no 45. So it's not on here. 52, 56. Must Just be. a point of clarification, the items that I noted were in the previous list. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's yeah. just go through this list. Let, let's just go from the top. Start right at the top. Here we go. Uh, addressable lights. Here was the feedback from the design team. So I don't know if you have any more input, Matt. Root. Uh, Matt, the other Matt. <laughs> I think Matt has supported this. Yeah, I'm. I, I mean, I, I'm. I think we need to save some money where we can, and this is this is an opportunity, and we don't need it for code compliance. Okay. Sl slightly more people wanted to accept this than reject it. So, if you're comfortable. Lorraine was also comfortable with it. Motion to accept this. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Um, Alexa had to jump off. But I'm still here. The call hasn't come in, so I'm a yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Court? Yes. Heather? Yes. Frank? Can anyone thumbs see up from thumbs, up. Thumbs, thumbs up? Thumbs up. Yeah. Right. Somebody could just automatically jump in when they see uh, Frank's hand go up. Uh, Peter? Shalis? Is Peter still with us? I think he just left. Okay. Uh, Dawn? Yes. Uh, Ra uh, sorry, Lori? Yes. Matt Johnson? Yeah. yeah. Pat, yes. Chris? Yes. Uh, Charlie? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Steven Sashevsky? Yes. yes. Peters? Yes. All right. All right. Next item is the wood look ceiling. Does anybody need more information about this? Yeah, I was hoping there was a visual we could look at. There are. This is This was helpful. I saw this this morning. Thank you, SMMA, for showing us where it is. Does everyone know where they are in the building? So this is sort of the entryway um, from the north. The building here. Oh, I'm sorry, from the south. Yeah, that connects out the back. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, from the north, right? Yeah, page north. No. Yeah, there's here's, the entry. Here's the, here's okay, the I was like, am I backwards? <laughs> yep. And then the CAF, the media center, and the lobby yep. are the only spaces I see that have that. Here, media, cafe. So... Here's the some of the wood look panels and this um, connector bridge, as we've been calling it. This is the media center corridor. And then, yeah, media center cafe. And what we're asked to imagine, Ian, is that this would all be replaced with uh, ceiling tiles. What what are we what are we imagining this? Two two by two ceiling tiles. Two by two ceiling tiles. 
So everybody, if you're in an office and you can look up and see your ceiling tiles, that's that's what it would look like instead of this. So it's a dramatic change. Yes, it is. They would not be, however, at a seven foot height, would they? As in an office? I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Um, no, there's no height that would be changed um, as part of this. It would just be the material switch. But it's the same same profile of the ceiling in these various spaces, just material change. Well, Lori, do you want to speak to this? Yes, I, I think it's a dramatic change to the feel of the school, which is about learning environment and climate and culture. And we were very inspired by a school that we visited in Beverly. And this was, I think, a result of that experience and how that created a really warmer, engaging place to be. So I feel really strongly we need to keep these. Dawn. I had a question and Matt may or may not be able to answer this. It, it, and it might answer it in the language. I just want to clarify. It's a wood look, right? So it looks like wood, but isn't the expense of real wood. Am I understanding that right? And often at that height, 10 plus or whatever, you can't tell. I often will use wood look as opposed to real wood. So just as a, if it's not already, I would propose maybe they consider a wood look over a real wood because often without the ability to touch it, it, looks really similar but is uh cost would look yeah so that tells me it's probably a not real wood okay so motion to reject item 14. second it second it okay any more discussion all right alexa are you with us no so let me just clarify, this motion to reject means we would keep the wood look ceilings, mm -hmm. but not replace them. You know, Pat, I, this is Keith. I apologize if I'm out of turn, but I just wanted to reinforce Lori's comments. If you look at the diagram, you can see how limited and judicious we are in the choice of that material. And then when you see the renderings, you can see the impact of it. So I think you know, you get a lot of bang for a little buck here. And um, I would just support Lori and Don's position that this is a big impact to the environment of the school. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, again, a yes vote keeps this in the budget. Court, your hand is up. Yeah, I just want to uh, register an opinion that this one's difficult because for me because although it creates a wonderful wow factor, um, we have produced a budget problem for ourselves and we uh, now are into things that are purely aesthetic, um, important, don't get me wrong, but uh, 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 I wonder if the, that same wow factor could be achieved with uh, uh lesser expanse of metal ceiling thank you charlie yeah i i uh, had asked before that we look at at a lesser cut than the entire amount i again this is an aesthetic and you wonder if if you did cut another piece of it out whether whether that would even be noticed after the first month uh of of occupancy by the kids these things are probably more important in the eye of the adults than the kids. That's just my opinion. Uh, and you know, if you had to, to save another hundred thousand somewhere, if you could shrink this down by a bit, uh, it would be a big help. So I would just urge Lori to to look at at another level here, less than one eighty nine. So right now we're just going to vote on whether or not to rem on item 14, which would be removing one third of the total 7,500. No, no, so so just to point just to point this out, during schematic design, this was already scaled back. Right. Sorry. So there, there were already cuts made to this design feature and schematic design. That's, that's correct. And you're hearing a request uh, for more yep. of same. For another round of cutting, yes. So, but right now we're voting on whether to um, 
keep the wood look in the budget and we could possibly look later at reducing it, but we want to keep the wood look at this point in the budget. And that's what we're voting on. So, thank you. Reread the motion. Uh, My motion was to reject this item 14. Heather. Thanks. I just want to, I respectfully disagree that this is purely aesthetic. Um, I think something that we can think of, <coughs> sorry, as aesthetic can be something that is integrated into the experience of students. And Charlie's probably right. If you ask students right now, is this important? They might, they might not say yes, because, but, th but this isn't about what they consciously know to be the the aesthetics of their surrounding it's about the feel of this building and the feel of being welcomed and learning and i think it's this is central to everything that we've talked about in this building so i strongly recommend that we reject it according to don's motion steve i i think that we all know that there's a long way to go here and that we can ask the designers to please take a look in the in the coming months as we continue the final design, even after the 60% CD to, to hopefully help us in this budget constraint as we know that the conditions aren't gonna change, but for today, I'm going to vote to keep it in uh, with hope that we can, we can has, have our designers continue uh, with us to find opportunities to save, including this particular uh expanse of uh, wood ceiling that i will vote today to keep uh to keep the process moving uh into getting approval through the town okay i think we're ready to vote uh alexis gone still court no uh heather yes frank Thumbs up. Yes, yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. Don? Yes. Lori? Yes. Matt? Yep. Pat Nelson, yes. Chris Popov? No. Charlie Parker? No. Matt Root? Yes. Steven Sischewski? Yes. So it uh, stays in the budget. All right, let's continue. All right, next up. All right. Item 30 is related to some exterior changes. Does anyone need more information about this? Um, we're going to vote on it, uh, but let's see if anyone has questions about it. Can you walk us through this, Michael, maybe? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, re removal of the 100 linear feet of retaining wall. I can't really point to this, but you'll get the idea, I hope. Removing 100 linear feet of retaining wall and guardrail is right along where it looks like the cursor is right now. Thank you very much. Yep, right along through there. Um, and then the lawn terraces are just directly to the left. The stairs are sort of in between where we just were, They're right there. Thank you very much. And then the concrete walkway is, yeah, that walkway right there. That's right. That's a walkway, not a ramp. Uh, and then we would add 800 square feet of concrete pavement to that upper patio where you can sort of see tables congregating, yeah, and then regrading. So it, it would essentially remove that upper uh, uh, outdoor area level connection to the, to the lower and vice versa. We would no longer have a connection between that upper open outdoor space and the lower outdoor spaces. Uh, Charlie? I have two questions. Uh, I think Lorraine had accepted this one previously or SMMA had. I'd like to hear 
your comments on that, number one. Number two, we approved the bridge to keep it in the project. What happens to the bridge if this goes away? And number three, uh, what's the effect of these changes on the rest of the retaining wall that you that, that's pictured uh, on the south side of the building? Uh, let me see if I can answer those questions in order. The first one, I, I can't speak for Lorraine. I apologize. I'm not sure what Lorraine's position was on this. I don't want to. I don't want to put words in her mouth. Um, the second one, the bridge. Um, Charlie, I'd have to. I'd have to look and see what what happens with that bridge. I, th I think I, I, I my, we... my instinct is that the bridge would need would would have to come up. Would wouldn't have to come up, but the bridge would be would not be necessary. If, if we removed that walkway. So I think that sort of is part and parcel of this. The third question is that the retaining walls, we'll, we'll still need additional retaining walls. Uh, well, not additional retainers, but we'll, we'll still need to be able to retain that soil. So essentially what will happen is that the retaining wall will wrap around and tie back into the building in, in, in some manner at that building corner. Don? I guess I just wanted to point out that connectivity throughout the campus is important from a student experience standpoint. And, you know, we spoke about universal design earlier. From my standpoint, if you disconnect the upper area outside of the dining from the lower area and one has to travel back into the building to get down there, in my mind, is a disservice to the students. I mean, on a nice day like today, they might be out there one period and then need to connect to an outdoor classroom. And, you know, that that connectivity, it becomes part of the campus and the student experience. So, you know, from a universal design standpoint, it's preferred to have it. I think, I do think Lorraine was willing to say it may not be needed. It just disconnects the campus um, from a cost saving standpoint. So to, to Charlie's question earlier I think they were saying you could do it you just have to go into the building to get down to that lower level um I didn't realize in all the times we talked about this it, it removes that lawn and puts concrete which is not as great of an experience uh, so that's my two cents I think the critical part of what Dawn just said is the, is the word campus, right? If you're really trying to create a campus here, it needs to be indoors and outdoors. It's not just, it's just not just inside of a building. If we're, if we're creating a campus community, then I think you have to have that really strong connection. And we've been talking about those connections since day one, basically. Court, uh, court first and then Charlie. Yeah, Michael, I wonder if we could go back to that image again, please. If, if I'm correct, uh, up until about six months ago, we did indeed have a, a larger patio, uh, as I call it, uh, or uh, uh, surface right, right where the cursor is, that then got reduced uh, in order to propose this uh, wall and ramp and stair. Um, am I correct on that? That is correct, yes. Okay, so uh, I would note that uh, we, we never dug into that at the design subcommittee. Um, we terminated our activities just as that thing was coming online. So it, it's never re really received the kind of uh, scrutiny that some of the, some of the other aspects did. Um, generally, in regard to outdoor access, we have, if I'm correct, three constructed environments, um, you know, semi artificial environments uh, where the cursor is now and then uh, any number of found environments um, for outdoor access, if I'm correct. Um, what are the implications of losing the the surface that was originally envisioned that uh, I saw as outdoor eating, but then also as multi-purpose. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the question was what are? By reducing the, uh, the outdoor eating area that we're looking at right now, um, 
are we fully replacing it with this ramp and stair and uh, built out bridge underneath the uh, the sky bridge? So yeah, all right, thanks, Charlie. So the the original design contemplated, uh, like you said, a larger um, outdoor dining space with with a lot more set tables. What this does is just simply sort of it's a combination of right sizing that patio space, but also giving the students the um, the opportunity to either sit at a you know a structured table or to be able to you know sit on the lawn um, to enjoy their lunch instead. So the idea was to sort of create these. Uh, a, a way to engage even during lunchtime a way to engage kids with uh, the opportunity to just you know be be on the grass instead of sitting on at, at another table in another chair as they do all day so so I don't I don't think um, we've taken any of that program away we've just sort of reallocated it and given them more more choices in the in the way that they can enjoy themselves outside mm -hmm. thank you Uh, yep. uh, Charlie. Yeah, it, it, my, my opinion on this is it seems to be a fairly expensive and elaborate method to connect the cafeteria with the outdoor classrooms to net this out. And I suppose to allow people who have been, uh, you know, in the cafeteria to, you know, access and get into the woods. Um, so what we're looking at here is a child comes out and eats, you know, finishes lunch, goes back inside, I suppose, and returns their tray and so forth, comes back out and needs to go down to the outdoor classrooms or do something else. It just seems to me to be a, a you know, a, a use problem with the use case that I have. And uh, maybe somebody could comment on that. It doesn't seem that this is going to get the kind of use that, that, that we might think it would. Laura, you want to go ahead and comment on that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, for one, I just want to note how many kids we already have eating outside. We've maintained the tents that started in COVID and our Justin's asked for me to provide those through the remaining time that the kids are at Sanborn. So it's become and should be something that's really important to the middle school and we want to keep fostering that. My second comment is that at the high school where there weren't built in structured uh, transitions between spaces on that major campus. Um, kids made their own, <clears throat> kids made their own transition. And then it, it eroded and we had other damage to fix. And we have retroactively with, uh, retroactively had to put stairs and ramps in, mostly stairs at the high school um, to accommodate and push them over to a place that's better for the campus so that we don't get erosion where we don't want it. So I think this potentially could turn into that exact same problem. Um, so I think we need to keep it. Thank you, Chris. A couple of things to kick this around some more. On the grassy area slopes from the cafeteria down to that retaining wall. And presumably that's at a reasonable incline for accessibility, uh, otherwise, and then you've got stairs on the west side of that, of that wall. So I'm kind of questioning what the purpose of those extra set of stairs. Now, maybe that's not a big cost item relative to the entire set of structures there. And there also questions about how deep it has to go. Uh, does that retaining wall have to be positioned where it is? Could the whole structure be shallower? Would that make a difference? Uh, could it be level? And uh, is there an advantage to having that incline versus a level outdoor area if you want to retain an area of that size? And the last set of questions are, are any of these retaining walls along that south wall necessary for structural support for the building itself? Uh, I take it these are obviously necessary to support all the soils and the grass area. So they're just things I think our, our designers could vet out a little bit more um, as, as we kick this around. Matt. So I, this is also one where I wonder if there is the opportunity to keep the uh, grass uh, area and the retaining wall, but to remove the walkway 
uh, just I think for kind of the reasons that Charlie was saying um, that it it might not really provide a, an access that would be used a lot and it might add a lot of cost. I don't know. It's just that it's uh, we have a lot of these where it's either all or nothing kind of options and maybe something in between would be a, a good compromise. But, you know, I know that that's not what's in front of us right now. Right. So what's in front of us right now is do we want to keep this general design and we can take it out or we can keep it in. We can keep it in and then ask if there are some ways to to look at making it somewhat less expensive, but we would be deciding today that at the very least we want to keep it in. Now I just want to make some comments on why I think this is an important part of the building and an important, the connectivity to the outdoor spaces is important. From a, from a student experience perspective, especially middle school students, the more students can be outdoors and moving during the day, the better they are going to be able to access the curriculum once they're in the classroom. There's just lots of studies about that. I think we probably all know that, who have had middle school students living in our houses at one time or another. One of the most exciting things about this project was that it did provide this kind of, I'm, I'm gonna call it recess space that I think 12, 13 year olds desperately need in order to be more successful in their middle school years, which will lead to greater success at the high school level. Matt Rice. Uh, I just want to add another um, another way of thinking about this and this the continuity of circulation around the perimeter of building that it provides. Um, and it's really from a school safety uh, perspective, which I don't think we've talked about yet. Uh, without the, the sloped walkway that leads down and connects through to the back, um, what ends up getting created out behind the dining commons area is really what we refer to um, sort of on the inside of the building as, say, a dead end corridor. Um, so when you come out, there's only one way to get out in a way. Um, so it's really unfortunate in this day and age that we have to be thinking about things. But creating a scenario where students are coming out and only have one way to get away from the building um, is really not the ideal in terms of a, a overall safety approach to how the building is designed. So having two ways to go, um, opportunities to go in different directions is really preferable whenever we can manage it. Um, and so I think that's one really, um, it, you could say minor, but it's actually a substantial um, consideration in terms of really providing the connectivity um, down to the surrounding areas, in addition to all of the educational benefits that I think have been articulated very well. Charlie, is there access to the to the woods uh, further down towards the towards the uh, the gym on that south side? I thought there were a couple access points along the front of the building on the south side, other than this ramp. No, I, I don't believe. No, we, we're showing working back and forth between showing a uh, a walkway that runs along there that would then lead to the. Um, there you go. Thank you. Uh, uh, that leads over to the, the loading dock area. So there's a way to get out from this back area to the loading dock area. But as Matt uh, Rice has correctly stated, that would be the only way to get out of this space if that walkway was eliminated. There well, just looking at looking at the at the design, there are a couple of openings in that retaining wall along the south side. Uh, that's yeah. It's just slope. That's what we're trying to do is. What we've been trying to do is reduce the amount of wall that we need. So we've been manipulating the location of it and trying to tie into the contours a little bit better. So, so yeah, I, I think I know what you mean, but, but that it's a two to one slope. It's not, I suppose, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a way to get away from the building, but that yes, it's a two to one slope down into, into the wood one. And one other just quick comment. It is about a six foot drop from the media center sidewalk down to that lower footing. Uh, it might be more if you'd count up the number of steps you've got risers that are eight inches yeah. or so and you know you could probably i don't know it's six to eight feet you know downhill uh yeah. if you measure it and that, that's 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 uh that's really significant yes yeah, so the idea there was to terrace uh, uh create a lawn terrace similar to the lawn terrace over on uh, uh 
on the north side beside the bridge. And it's, it's sort of laid out and developed to, to create enough room for another, uh, another nice seating space. But we also wanted to make sure that walkway that we're talking about, that connector walkway, we wanted to make sure that that was a walkway and not a ramp um, for a couple of reasons, right? Um, it just makes it easier for all students to pass through. And it's also a lot less expensive to build a walkway than it is to build a ramp. Um, so that, that was part of the reason why we, 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 we sort of laid it out the way it's laid out. Matt Root. Well, I don't know that I should jump the line from Chris and, and Court. Well, you've, you've um, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about who has talked less and who has talked okay. less. Sure. I, I guess my, just my, my two cents, I, I think the continuity and the other reasons mentioned are very important. And I wonder maybe optimistically if there are other opportunities for, for savings here. I, my my thinking right now is is to reject this specific VE item, but would ask the designers to if there are other smaller tweaks that we could do that that still maintain the continuity but save money. Thank you, Matt. Okay, Court. Thank you. I think the uh, the cost of this one is significant uh, to the degree that it does deserve as much attention as this committee wants to give it. I don't want to rush it. Uh, I would. I, I think we would benefit from seeing the earlier conception that seemed to be acceptable to uh, the uh, designers. If we can come back to that picture, um, and uh, then how we uh, or they had it evolve into this solution, what was gained, what was lost. Finally, I would note that uh, if we truly are trying to embrace nature, this is a lot of concrete to achieve nature. Chris? Referring to the embodied carbon and the concrete? Charlie, I've just called on Chris. Chris? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still somewhat puzzled uh, by just a couple things, and maybe we can clarify this as we study this more. The structure leading from the grassy area down toward beneath the bridge, I thought somebody said that's not a ramp. It looks like a ramp, and I would assume that the ramp is at an incline that's accessible for everyone. Is that right? Uh, actually, it is not a ramp. It is uh, a ramp would be you know, maximum of, of one in 12 rise to run. This is uh, about one in 22 rise to run. So technically okay. it's a walkway. So just a point of clarification, the, could we have the drawing back please? Yeah, I was trying to get to the grading plan. So you okay, there we see. go. So, so the point is we have something that now it looks less like a ramp. It's a way for people to walk, but that's not something if I'm in a wheelchair, I'm going to use. Secondly, for safety reasons, I, Please, could we have the drawing back? <laughs> just to just leave it in place for a few moments so we can talk about it clearly. It's very frustrating for those of us in this meeting who can't see what we're talking about. And could we blow it up a little bit more, please, like you did before? Thank you. Good. So if I'm on the grassy area and I'm in a wheelchair, I'm not going down that ramp. I'd have to get out and be walked. Secondly, on safety, I understand <laughs> Matt's point about getting away from the building, but that leads you back toward the building. And I, I'd like to think that we could come up with some way, if you're on that grassy area, you'd move to the west, which might get you away from the building in case of some reason to get farther away. But again, these are, these are a lot of things that I think could make a big difference cost and we need to work through. And to, to Court's point, we didn't really get into the design details. And I think if we, you know, we okay, we'll kick this down the road and maybe there'll be some savings, but it, but this is, this is a tough one. I think this problem has to be worked a lot more to come up with an optimum solution that meets the, edu you know, the educational goals and safety goals and so forth. John? I just had a question. Why would someone in a wheelchair not use a one in 22 sloped walkway, Chris? You're I'm, I'm asking the, the experts about this. I mean, that, that was the, the point is, it, but you tell me. If I mean, they can. It, it just doesn't require railings. That's all. It's an accessible oh, walkway, not an accessible okay. ramp. Okay, I, I, I wasn't clear on that. That's yep. that was no. It's it's actually less sloped than a ramp. It's 
Yeah, it's um, okay. more yeah, shallow no, and doesn't require railing, so it's actually better in my yeah, opinion. No, I, a, a, a fair point. Again, it just okay. clarity helps because for those of us looking at these depictions and what's depicted there, somebody outside and says, okay, here we are. Fair, if it's designed so I can move up and down in a wheelchair and that's what we want, hallelujah. Of course, yeah, you wouldn't put something there that would say, that you, you, as you say, you're in a wheelchair, you're gonna go back in. So thank you. Um, I just wanna comment that this is a really difficult process. And um, Chris, I, I take your comments. You wanted to be able to see um, what you could see. Ian is trying to, to show what he thinks he needs to show. I just, um, I beg everyone's uh, forbearance and to be patient with each other as we go through this. Um, I, I'm wondering if we can go back to this item and decide if we want to keep it in or take it out or if we need more discussion. Um, it seems like we, ha we have two very different sides to this discussion. One is the, the, the value to the educational plan and the experience of the children and uh, also questions about other tweaks that we could make to it to make it uh, less expensive. Um, so I would like to see us move forward, um, but I do see Matt and Charlie with their hands up. So let, let me hear from you guys. So first? I just, I'm curious whether that lawn area is accessible. It seems like the only area, that it that, that lawn eating area out there, is that an accessible area? Could It seems like the only area in the program area in the, in the building that isn't. Uh, you're correct, Matt. It is not accessible. It's accessible. The, the base of the lawn area is accessible by the walkway. The top of the lawn, the top of the lawn area is accessible from the building in the patio area. And, and is there a safety concern for anybody that, you know, is at the top of that and that would attempt to access the lawn, you know, in a wheelchair or something? I mean, I'm not sure how to answer that. Yeah, Don, can you comment on that from your experience with the um, Architectural Access Board? Yeah, thank you. I just raised my hand to say it needs to be accessible, Mike. You need to have access between. I assumed there was a ramp. No, yeah, I don't think it, this plan works. This was, Don, this was the area where we, were, we, we had discussed um, the waiver process, if you remember correctly. Well, we didn't at the committee level. Hmm. Charlie? Yeah, I had the same comment. You really can't traverse that, that terrace in a wheelchair if, if that's what you want to do with six to eight feet drop. It isn't going to really work that well, especially given that there's bumps in there, shelves and bumps, uh, you know, to create those terraces um, or mini terraces, I should say. This is like the, the area in the front of the school between the you know, where you're putting the amphitheater, uh, you've got these shelves, uh, picture it that way. I think that's right, Mike, isn't it? That's correct, that's correct. Okay. Okay, one last comment, and then we're, I'm gonna call the vote on this. And I, and I believe that we have enough energy to, if we voted to keep this, <clears throat> with the caveat that it needs more look and it needs to be uh, accessible and it needs um, some more information about it, but that in theory, we want to keep the connection in the budget, if that's the way the, the, the committee voted. If the, vote, if the committee votes to take it out of the budget, then that's, that then is taken out of the budget. Chris? Quick comment from Michael, uh, I'd be low that I think Dawn would agree, we're building a brand new building to start planning for any kind of variances from the applicable codes. Uh, I, I just don't think we wanna be doing that right now. Okay, Steve. Sorry, it's a, I think one of court's requests was appropriate. And if we do have an image, it would be great to see what the alternative would be if we were to take this value engineering item uh, there was a previous rendering. I, I am not familiar with it. What would it look like if we did not have this ramp and we did try to save all this uh, 
all these dollars, what would we end up with? What is that visual look like? Do we have it? I'm not familiar with it. Um, it would be very me to to see what we would be voting to proceed with. Michael, do we have? I I thought that that there had been a discussion in the design committee about this part of the building. Um, that was in uh, Lorraine had provided us with the, the minutes from a design committee discussion, but I don't want to argue that. Um, I, I do wonder though: is is there another rendering that could be shown to this group now, if that's what they're looking for? Um, uh, maybe not a rendering, but maybe something back from schematic design, like a a, a a plan view, just a line drawing type thing. I could try to pull up if you could give me a few moments. Okay, so why don't we just take this one off the board and come back to it later in this meeting and see if there's anything that can be provided to us that gives us some insight into that. Um, or okay. We have noted uh, cost issues, sustainability issues, access issues, uh, uh, a number of safety issues, a uh, number of concerns here. Um, uh, this image was presented to the design subcommittee on May 19th, and uh, uh, we were told our activities were to be suspended at that time. And uh, no, we didn't, we didn't get into this uh, design change. Um, uh, I know that uh, we've got some sense of urgency to uh, finish this up but we also want to get the best design possible. Um, so given the $350,000 magnitude and all of the issues uh, that I just noted, uh, maybe this is not one that uh, requires a big rush. I don't think we do our best work that way. Well, as I suggest, let's table this item. Let's go back to the list of um, items uh, that, that require more discussion and, and then circle back around to it. Uh, the next item, we should look at these together. This is related to um, the PV. So 43 and 44, they pretty much zero each other out. This is moving. Uh, fixtures, light fixtures to uh, the PV canopies. So I don't understand this, these two items. I, um, I think I need some explanation of how they zero each other out and whether or not what we would be possibly voting on. And if there's any way to reduce the cost of the project re regarding these light poles. Um, I don't think there was any graphics associated with this one. I'm not seeing anything. So Ian, can you explain or, or SMMA explain? Do we, are we really talking at what we're looking at are cost savings. We're not looking at where we would prefer to have things. We're just looking at cost savings. So if there's no possible cost savings we're going to have to have light somewhere can we just skip this do we have to dwell on I, you, you should probably just take this off the vm log both of these items it's because it's it's a it's a natural shift if you're going to put pv arrays in the parking area it's a natural shift from uh light poles to lights that are mounted on the pv arrays then i suggest we just um, dispense with discussion on this and take it off the VE list. Question. Does anyone object? Question. Or yeah, um, the operative word on both of these is if. Uh, and who's going to who's going to help us sort that out? The light board. Uh Oh, you mean whether or not we actually have lights in the parking lot? I mean that these two items are predicated on an if statement. Um, 
so it looks like there are choices to be made before this choice gets made. I'm asking uh, who brings us that uh, information or that decision uh, that here requires a, an, an if statement. Am I clear? Oh, you mean if the PV canopies are installed at all in the north parking lot? I, I, I'm, I'm really lost on this one. It, it's, it's a matter of timing. So the way that we're timing this right now is we're, we're coordinating a design with the PV project with the intent that, that we're going to proceed with construction and they're going to proceed with construction uh, towards the end of our site development and have these PVs in place for day one of school opening. And so if that is the case, then you would shift this infrastructure from poles to the PV arrays. If that is not the case, if they can't, if they can't uh, keep up with the, with the pace of our design and construction and they end up doing these PV arrays at a later date, we need lights in the parking area day one. So they would shift back to poles. So there's no cost savings. It's, there's going to be lights no matter what. There's going, to, there's going to be lights. It's just a matter of do you put them on poles or do you put them on the PV arrays? Yeah. Just a function of timing. Uh, Court, I see your hand still up. Yeah. Will we be hearing from the light board on uh, current status of their work on behalf of this project? I would suggest that that would be very time, very, very appropriate at this point. Good, good comment, but I think that what right now we're looking at how we can value engineer our project and this doesn't look like it's value engineering our project. So once again, I suggest we move on. If I see no objection, oh, Charlie. I would agree with that point. Let's, let's table this. Anybody disagree? All right, let's move on. Okay. Uh, the next item is surrounding schedule. So right now we're carrying a 20 month schedule for construction um, and general conditions staffing related to that 20 months of construction for the, for the general contractor uh, at a certain rate per month. So if we were to reduce the schedule by two months, accelerate the schedule to 18 months of construction, there would be some savings realized in, in general conditions. That that's the that's the idea here. Um, some of the some of the things that are factored into the twenty month schedule is are are ground improvements. Um, and after doing more geotech uh, investigations, there are not any ground improvements that that are going to be required here. So that's where this two months. Uh, savings is being realized. So uh, some other factors with this are, you know, where we're at with the current uh, market and trying to gather materials for this project, long lead items. Um, these things need to be taken into consideration uh, for the construction schedule. So there is some, some risk in trying to accelerate and getting to an 18 month schedule um, and not getting materials uh, that you need at the time that you need it. So um, th this is a, this is a, you know, a, a kind of a challenging thing to predict uh, what is the exact right time for construction uh, for this project. So keeping it as is at, at 20 months uh, would give you a little more cushion for market conditions and material delays. Uh, but it, you know, at, kind of drags out the general conditions and adds a little extra cost there. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're you're pushing the GC to accelerate the job to make sure they get the materials on time and and um, realizing some some savings in general conditions as a result. Matt. If I'm not mistaken, this one is different from all the other ones in that it isn't ultimately up to us, it's up to the bidders. And so we're making an assumption that the bidders will be willing to have this accelerated schedule. And if they're not, well, the cost will be what it is to, to run that long. 
Um, and so I think all of this is, is sort of hoping um, that we can get that. And again, I, I just in the current market environment, it seems unlikely. And so I think all we're doing is we're putting a, a discount on our project that we're not likely to realize. And maybe I'm wrong, but that that just seems like it. I agree with you, Matt. I feel like we this is not something what, that we, I mean, this would be a, it would be great if, but I don't think we can assume um, that it's a, a, a savings at this point. Heather? So I guess my question is to, to that point with both of you, I would love to hear the opinions of the professionals about whether this is realistic. Um, and the, the professionals are in the room as well as those who are not, those on our committee who who work in the industry like Don and Steve as well. Um, I would just, I'd love to get a little more insight into what those who know the, the situation think on this one. Oh yes, like Peter Martini, that would be great. <laughs> you know? now, I'll, now I'll lower my hand. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't really, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, we're, we, we've looked at this, we're looking at our uh, previous projects we're doing and projects we're doing now. Um, we, we think it's very achievable, um, but I would think at this particular time, um, at, at, at this point, we shouldn't be taking $270,000. As we get closer and are doing the 60% budget and so on, we can factor in schedule amounts into our overall estimate. <clears throat> so I, at, at, at this point, I would I would table it, and I'm confident that this is something we're going to achieve, but we shouldn't count on it today as a vote. So we would keep this this cost in the in the budget at this point. I, I would, but I, we're we're confident as we go go down here. This is going to be a uh, this is going to be a factor uh, in the pricing. One of the most important things we we could do, um, Matt, is to um, have the schedule as part of the bid, and we want to make it realistic. So we don't want to have it make it too short, so people are adding overtime. We don't want to have it too long, so people are adding general conditions. Um, so all that'll be part of the bid bid package. Steve, thank you, Peter. Steve, yeah, the, I I like Peter's comment, and I think we should keep the funding in the budget at this time. We're only at design development. And later, as we get closer to 100% construction documents, we'll have better feedback from the schedulers because they'll have more detail on what the construction process will look like. And all the materials that are actually specified at that time, we'll be able to identify what the long lead items are um, and work a, a more realistic schedule. And I think at that time, is the, it would be the appropriate time to lock in a final schedule. Uh, and so I. I agree with Peter. Heather? Thank you. That was really helpful. And now I'm on the same page with you guys. Um, <clears throat> on a related note, though, just give, given that timing and that we want to try to shorten it and save money on that down the line, I wanted to ask Matt Johnson if you could help us, I guess, explain to the select board um, that why our request for a special town meeting is time relevant. And I don't want to get into special town meeting discussion now. I'm not trying to get us off track, but just this reminds me that it's a relevant point. They were asking, why is it so important to do it soon? And if we're trying to shorten our construction schedule, then I think that's a, 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 an important answer in terms of why is the timing of town meeting important? Because if we don't move along and we lose our schedule, then we will end up spending more money. So anyway, just a side note that's related to this one. If we can't take the 270 now, let's make sure that we can try to get some of it back later. Thank you, Heather. So if no one objects, let's just decide we're going to keep that um, as in the budget. I don't think we need to make a vote on this. No one objects. All right, let's move along. All right. So the next is reduction in ceramic wall tile in the toilet rooms to eight foot on wet walls only and epoxy paint on the other walls. It has a value of two two seventy four two hundred seventy four thousand. Slightly more in support than you needed one more vote to make a majority on that one. So, Matt, do you mind walking us through this? Um, sure. No, I think it, it's pretty self explanatory from the graphic, um, right? So, we, the basic idea is to try to maintain the tile 
backsplash, if you will, but it's the entire wall uh, behind any of the plumbing fixtures um, for maintenance and cleanliness, that type of thing. Um, so where you see the red lines is what we refer to as the wet walls behind both the lavatories, the drinking fountains, as well as the um, water closets. Um, and so uh, the rest of the wall surfaces within the toilet rooms, um, we would be dealing with a, a gypsum board um, that we would treat with an uh, epoxy paint. So higher level of washability than say your hallway and classroom walls, even though it's the same baseline material, the paint is more durable, um, but there's good cost savings to come from switching from the tile to the, um, the epoxy paint and gypsum board approach. Peter, you have a question? Just to comment, uh, to me, this seems like a maintenance uh, issue and it would increase costs over time. Uh, Russ, you want to comment on that? Yeah, um, I'd concur. You know, it would, you know, you'd have to do wall repairs, painting, and things like that. So. In, in your experience with um, our current buildings, uh, is it sort of a no-brainer to you that you want to put the, the, the ceramic tile? Is it? Yeah, ceramic tile is definitely less maintenance. Okay. Okay, Matt. So I acknowledge that there would be more maintenance cost to eliminating the tile in some of these areas. But when I look at the overall cost of this item of 275000 it just seems like we, you know, we there is an ultimate cost benefit analysis that we need to make on these things. And while let's say the the flooring change that was proposed, I I would absolutely agree we shouldn't, you know, incur, incur lots of costs for maintaining the floors. When you look at this one, it it would take a lot of service costs to make up that $275,000 uh, uh, capital cost difference. And I just think this one, it might be worth making the trade-off. Court? Yeah, I've, I've spent 37 years in the public schools. I've seen a few bathrooms. Um, and uh, on my most recent visit to the high school, uh, it was very clear that the tile is important. Uh, we, I saw uh, where somebody had obviously kicked through a, a wall at, a, at an 18 inch uh, height, but it appeared to me in that school and elsewhere that uh, six feet is quite adequate. Chris? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify when it says reduce ceramic wall tile and tile rooms to eight feet. Uh, what's the total height of the walls? What's the ceiling height in the bathroom? Uh, I believe nine, they're about nine feet, Chris. Nine feet. So the idea is that you, are we reducing it from nine feet on the wet wall to eight feet? And then that foot is some other material? Am, am, I, am I thinking that the right way or have I got that wrong? Yeah, no, that would be correct. Okay. Isn't so, it also reducing it from being on all of the walls to just being on the wet walls? Thank you, that's that, another question too. Right, that's the majority of the savings. Um, and I think as, as Court was going down the road, we could always um, agree on a different height on the wet walls in terms of where the tile would extend up to. I think that's, that's a variable that we can sort out moving forward. I think the question is not having the tiles on the, um, on the non-wet walls. Correct. Okay. Anybody else have questions? I'd, I'd like to see the professionals come back with uh, uh, all exposed walls at uh, six feet, see what that would do for our price. It would do a lot to uh, protect the bathrooms. So you would reject uh, the concept of not having tiles on all of the walls, but you would like to have our professionals come back with six foot coverage versus the eight foot coverage. On wet and non-wet. If... Yeah, on all, all 
the walls, yeah. If, if that would be appropriate for uh, Russ's maintenance issues, uh, prevent the kick through damage, the deliberate damage. Yeah. And also, and also doesn't it uh, help uh, the uh, student or a faculty member in a wheelchair from uh, banging against the wall and uh, damaging it? I don't know, but I'd like their opinion. I think there are other alternatives here that might achieve same at lesser cost. I, I would agree that, that, that that's a good option to explore is, is six foot height on all walls for tile. So what we would be voting on is rejecting item 57 and asking the designers to, to bring us uh, a design that has six foot tile on all walls. Yeah, and it may be cost neutral. This may not be a cost consideration yet. It may be a design consideration first as it should be and then a cost consideration. Right. If we accept it and keep it on the VE log, we take out that cost of covering all of the walls, basically. We just table two. I like. I think this one would deserve tabling. If the professionals agree, they can bring us back something. Well, I want, I want to reduce the number of things that we have to table. If there's a way to think about this as. I mean, the, the, you're just showing the difference between square foot of tile here. So if the basis of design, correct me if I'm wrong, the basis of design is nine foot, it's full tile on every wall. Is that the basis of design? Yes, that's what I believe we were holding. Okay, so. You've got a certain square footage for full tile on every single wall. So instead of doing this option, you're reducing it down to six foot on every single wall. There's going to be a savings realized. We don't know the exact amount because we need the square footage difference. So you could vote to reject this and accept that change from a nine foot tile height to a six foot tile height with the idea that we would come back with the, the actual value. It's going to be a savings. It's just a matter of what is the savings. I, I like that because I don't think that we're going to be able to add up our dollars to, to where we want to go, but we are showing uh, respect for the maintenance costs of the, the bathrooms, but uh, reducing the cost of that, um, this item. Somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion to uh, vote on huh, vote on rejecting this item, but also uh, accepting a value engineering item that states six foot tile on all restroom walls. Second. All right. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All right. Alexa. She's I like it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Court. Aye. Heather. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Frank. Up. I should stay yes. unmuted and watch him. Uh, Peter Fischelis. Yes. John Garelio. Yes. Uh, Lori Hunter. I'm a no. Okay. Uh, Matt Johnson. Aye. Okay, uh, Pat Nelson, yes. Chris Popov, yes. Charlie Parker, yes. Matt Root, yes. Even Staszewski, yes. All right, and so that motion passes. Okay, so all, all we need to do then is come back to you with the value. We'll plug it into the, to the VM log. We'll switch this out. Do we plug it into the VM log or do we just assume that what, that's what we're going to go with? Because we've rejected the idea that we would not have, um, we would not, we've rejected the idea that there would be walls in the bathrooms that were not tiled. We've accepted the idea that we want, 
we want those tiles, but we just want them to be six feet instead of eight feet. So we don't need to go back and decide whether or not we're going. There, to there's no more decisions that need to be made. You guys just made a decision. We'll come back and plug in the value, the savings, TBD. Okay, thank we you. We just need to run the calcs. Okay, got it. Yep. All right, moving along. <laughs> Lightning prevention, the elimination of the lightning prevention system. So can someone explain to us um, how often this is uh, done in schools and the importance of it for a safety, as a safety measure? So lightning protection or lightning prevention systems, and there is a difference between those two approaches, but so taking some approach to prevent um, or anticipate um, a lightning strike on a building um, is something that we do put in fairly um, often on school buildings. Um, the reason is it's driven by NFPA um, and there's a, essentially a risk analysis that usually when you run through because of um, the type of use in a school building, um, it's a fairly critical use to a community. Um, it generally, um, if you analyze it, the, the, the study tool that they give you will come back saying that it is recommended. Um, it, it's not a requirement uh, per se, uh, but it is something that um, we end up putting on a lot of buildings. Um, the difference between the protection system, um, if you can imagine your roof surface um, has a, um, a series around the perimeter um, of say 18 inch high, um, little spikes um, essentially and it would say that um, anywhere lightning is going to try and uh, hit the building um, it will probably be around those points and then we ground um, those little spikes down um, to the, the building foundation usually um, so it, it is trying to give lightning a path down to ground essentially um, a lightning prevention system um, which is a little less costly and is what we were anticipating right now um, is a series of higher masts. You can think of them like flagpoles, um, essentially they get mounted on the roof. Um, and I, we probably have about two of them uh, for a building of this size. And um, the idea there is that they have these little bulbs on top of them that um, there's some mysterious physics going on, but the idea is that they actually um, prevent um, the, the lightning from actually approaching the building. So it's trying to divert it away. Um, and not have a lightning strike to the building. So two slightly different approaches. Uh, the prevention system is a little bit less costly, which is generally why we've been shifting and going with those um, as of late. Uh, either is a viable approach though, um, in terms of dealing with the, the lightning issue. Don? I was just going to add, I haven't not put one in in a building ever. <laughs> So, and I usually do the protection, which is the first one that Matt described with the little, the short spikes that you see along the outside of the building. So for what it's worth, they're common practice for me and my firm. Russ? Yeah, I'll just add to that too. We do have those up at the high school, the, the poles. So it's the prevention system. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or can we vote on this one? Stephen? I'll move to uh, reject this item. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, second. Uh, Alexa seconded it. So any discussion, can we go ahead and vote? All right. So we're rejecting the, a yes vote is reject this item. We. Uh, keep this in the budget. Um, Alexa? Yes. Court? Yes. Heather? Yes. Frank? He's thumbs up. Yes, thank you. Heather, can you be my Frank watchdog? <laughs> yes, I will. I'll just remember, try to remember to stay unmuted and, and muted and tell uh, it. Peter Pashalis? Yes. Don? Yes. Lori? Yes. Matt? Yes. Pat, yes. Chris? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Matt? Yes. And Stephen? Yes. Okay, passes. Moving along. It's, it's getting late. It's I know it's getting late. How many more of these do we have? I think we're at the end of our list, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
All right, it's already let. You've got some fairly complicated ones in here. This isn't a no brainer. Yeah. Um, can we go back to your list, Ian, and see if we can pull out the, the uncomplicated ones? Can we expand a little bit? So um, how about 66? We've made it through this so far. I'm going to just try to go through the uncomplicated ones. And you know, it doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about the other ones, but if we can do as much as we can do before 1030. Um, I think uh, 66 will require more time. OK. Um, how about 67? I think Dawn's already shared some opinions on that that might be persuasive. Um, oh, that might be quick. That could be a quick one. Okay, let's um, let's go with this. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Do people need more information? Yes, is this the one where we have the realization today that we have um, level curbing and that the curbing is just a separation of on-grade materials in plane? Or, or, or sorry, is this... Uh, this is where we were going to revisit the amount of uh, elevated curbing to eliminate some of the bollards. But this is this is getting rid of of raised curbing, replacing it with granite with, with granite curbing. Um, Wait, sixty seven. So yeah, sixty seven is taking granite curbing out and Charlie, going can with we hear from concrete. The, can we hear from the professionals as to what this is. Sure. Okay. So item item sixty seven is simply replacing the granite material with a co precast concrete material. So that doesn't change the length, doesn't change the location, doesn't change the quantity or anything. It just changes the material only. And we had recommended only doing it in straight areas, not in curved areas, because it's less susceptible to, um, to plow damage um, on, on straightaways. It's much more susceptible to plow damage on, on turns. And as you can imagine, um, precast concrete is is less durable than, than granite. And just to clarify, this is not in the areas where the bollards are. This is in- uh, It can be, we, we should have a slide in here. I apologize. There should be a slide in here yeah, where I, I highlighted the- uh, I don't think I saw the locations. In, in our, um, in SMMA's um, slide deck. So this is a combination of six inch uh height curbing and also level curbing and 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 flush curbing. that that's correct steve yeah that's correct so any, anywhere where it's granite and it was straight we highlighted those areas i mean for not for nothing if it's level and it's it's flat i, I don't know if the material matters to me um, but if it's an elevated curve and you see that profile that's when the material becomes apparent to the eye and that's why we're having the discussion right and, and of course, like again, precast concrete is is less expensive than granite. But oh, you know, here you go. I found it. Found it. Thanks. There it is. So there you go. It's about four thousand. If if you if you took every single location um, where there's straight curb, that those are the areas. The, the only thing you'll you'll notice that there's a couple tiny small areas where there might be some straight pieces at the drive entrances. I, I made a conscious decision to leave. The granite there because I think we want to maximize durability at at, at those um, at the curb cuts off Old Marlboro. Russ, can you comment on this? Yeah, no, I just concur with everything that Mike is saying. I, I would recommend to leave the granite wherever you can because it is very durable. Uh, it is uh, the concrete can get plow damage. Uh, it's also, it can deteriorate from the road salt we put down, um, you know, granite will last forever. So I think we've had this discussion before court with the school committee up at the high school. And do you so recall? Are you, are you advocating to keep granite everywhere? Or are you good with the precast concrete um, of the straight sections? I think we should keep it 
Everywhere, yes, absolutely. Granted everywhere, okay, from a maintenance point of view. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie, Colleen. Yeah, I, I've, I've consulted with others on this and the recommendation coming back is no, you don't want concrete, not in areas that get snow. Plow damage will be significant. We'll be replacing these frequently. So in the straight areas, keep the granite. So However, I, I have one comment that ought to be looked at. Can we go with a with a angled 45 degree angled style of granite, which is significantly cheaper and is the standard in Concord in many neighborhoods, uh, as opposed to the vertical uh, granite? Something to be looked at. Yeah, something that can be looked at. But let's let's stay on whether uh, on item 67. Court. Yeah, just a quick yes or no on this one. Do we indeed use a lot of salt there, given our proximity to the town well? Does it matter? So the question is, would the use of salt um, matter in terms of concrete durability versus granite durability? There's a lot of salt degradation, um, just given the fact that we're next to a town well. In the salt existing building, I, I'm not aware of any restrictions. So thank you. All right, can we vote on this one? Yes. Okay. So somebody want to uh, propose a? I'll make a motion to reject the VE item and keep the granite curbing uh, with the caveat that we would like the team to uh, look into 45 degree angle, uh, cheaper granite curbing. Second. Perfect. All right, um, Alexa. Yes. Court. Court. No. Yeah. Heather. Sorry. Heather. Yeah. Wait, can you come back? Sorry, I'm losing you in and out. I'll be there in a second. Okay, we can hear you. Uh, okay, uh, elect, uh, for, uh, Peter. Uh, yes, just confirming that we're, we're leaving this in the budget. Yeah. yeah, keeping the, the granite in the budget. Yep. Dawn? Yes. Russ, uh, I'm sorry, Lori? Yes. Matt? Yes. Matt, yes. Chris? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Matt? Yes. Stephen? Yes, and Frank has his thumbs up. Okay, and Frank is a yes, and Heather, are you with Yes, us? sorry about that, I lost you for a sec, but I'm falling now, yes. All right, so we are going to uh, keep that granite in the budget. Um, 69. Any, anybody got questions about that? What were our questions in the uh, in the survey? Uh, Don? Uh, I don't know if Matt can answer this. My assumption would be when you move it over to FF&E that it's, um, the, it's like a traditional buy it out of the catalog. It'll match the, the mobile stuff throughout the interior. And it may just be five or six feet high based on what's available and from that furniture uh, manufacturer or multiple furniture manufacturers. I believe that's correct on it. I would say we typically when we've done the higher shelves like that, we have done those custom millwork for that height. So I'm not 100% sure what their height limitations are, but that's what the general approach would be. Yes. So there would still be shelving. It just may not be as high and it would be wood to match the, the mobile furniture, the lower stuff on the inside of the media center. Correct. Okay. For the record, I um, voted to reject the savings. I think that they could make do with traditional five or six foot high. It'll match the mobile and um, would still be quite nice and you'd still have shelving, but 
that's, um, I, and that's typically what I would do in my projects. I've only ever done um, custom millwork like this in a, in a few unique circumstances. So as long as there's still shelving, <laughs> I, I wouldn't support getting rid of shelving in a media center, but um, I, and also the height of that, someone might need a step stool or something to get to it. So it'd be more for storage than regularly accessible books, which may be less functional for what it's worth. So uh, a yes vote would be to, um, to eliminate the built-in shelving and, and accept that, that savings. So we would be uh, accepting this number 69. Just to be clear, Heather. Just a quick question: If we're moving the cost of a different types of shelves to FF and E, is that are those types of shelves less expensive than doing it via millwork? I want to make sure there's actual safety. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the idea. You're sw you're switching okay. from custom millwork, at whatever the cost is, to the prefab uh, shelving. Prefab okay. shelving that okay. would save you seventy five thousand dollars. Okay. In its simplest terms, Heather, and sorry to speak without raising my hand again, Pat, in its simplest terms, you could pay a carpenter to come in and build you this nice seat with hooks in your mudroom, or right. you could buy one from Pottery Barn. Right. Like those okay. are the, right, like in its simplest terms. So you can buy the furniture out of the furniture right. uh, package and still have it, or you could pay a guy to custom build it for the space that it's in. Okay. So a yes vote is we're okay with Pottery Barn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Got it. Thank okay, you. Then we can I mean, I can't guarantee Pottery Barn, but I know, I know, I get it. <laughs> the IKEA, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I really want to keep us on track. We're maybe we can bundle a bunch of these now. I mean, we're getting into some small numbers, so let's try to bundle these. So, um, if somebody can keep track of this, I'm going to bundle the um, 69 to vote. We've had a discussion on that. We seem ready to vote on that. Uh, let's go to 72B. Um, any, any discussion on that? Are we ready to, can we, uh, I don't know how we bundle these. Does anybody well, want have to, to stop? You have or? to accept it. Okay. Do we want to accept this? Thank you, Charlie. Do we want to accept this reducing millwork display by 50%. Yes. Uh, Heather. Yes. It is a question. Is this another case where we're replacing it with prefab options? So we still have display cases? No. I think yeah, this option would just be a, a straight reduction in terms of the capacity of the, so we're not getting rid of them entirely, but we're reducing capacity by 50%. So the, Sorry, the blue, these, the the blue the is basis of design. Sorry to. Yeah, just sorry, the pictures, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Are these the ones that are kind of visible through from both sides through the, at the media center? Well, it looks like they're along the, they're along the corridor outside of the gym where you would be putting your trophies and stuff. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you'd be putting them along there, wherever it's blue. So yep. Hallway, media center, gym. Uh, in the in the class, uh, well, I guess that's it's the art rooms up upstairs. Art, art, there we go. Can yeah. So we, the, could we hear from someone at the school about thoughts on this, Lori? Or I don't think Justin's here today. Lori, can we hear Lori's opinion on this? Yes. You know, this is this is a method to display student work and bring the kids front and center and display all the great things they're doing and build community. It seems important to me. Thanks. Uh, Court? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, student work would not be restricted to uh, an enclosed case, however. We, we would have other opportunities, would we not? Certainly art projects and things like that are three-dimensional, and I don't know what the other options would be. You'd want those tucked in a case that's protected and secure. So I'm, I'm not sure. Does that mean anything on display has to be encased? I'm, I'm not quite. Well, these aren't, there aren't an extraordinary amount of them. So I think this would give you the option for the 3D projects and then other things could get posted other ways. So that. So there, there are other there ways. There are multiple kinds of work, so. Thank you. 
I'm not hearing that this is an easy accept or am I? Is there anyone, um, Charlie? Well, I don't think it's an easy accept, but again, we're not eliminating this function or this this uh, uh, attribute. We're cutting it. We're reducing it. And I, you know, I again, if we're going to try to try to get somewhere with this process, you know, we have to we have to be flexible to this sort of thing. So I, I I'm supportive of making this change. All right, we've got six more minutes of this. Uh, this meeting, people are starting to drop off at 1030. So um, I had hoped at the end of this meeting, we would have gotten through all of this. We're not going to. Um, so uh, I think we're gonna have to punt this to another meeting and that meeting would take place next, next Thursday. Uh, we can, what we can do is take to the, uh, to the select board, we can come, uh, Steve, I mean, I'm going to listen to what you're thinking about. I was just hopeful to add two more items to what we could bundle for one last vote and make a little bit more progress. Um, okay. Number 79 with the bollards, I think we made progress on bollards and that that vote would be consistent, I think, with the previous vote. And then uh, um, the sound field, I think we had some discussion there that was uh, fairly closing in my mind. So I think pe people would might be uh, willing to vote on number 74 also. And that would be a, a vote to? Accept or reject. Uh, so accept to uh, vote to keep the sound system as designed and um result yeah. yeah so i don't even know why this is on here again but is there something different about this Did we already vote? no we talked about it early on and before we started voting on number 74. Oh, okay all right okay and then this i'm not sure where we ended on the bollards my memory is not great um we, we, we didn't we didn't discuss we didn't discuss stainless steel sleeves on the bollards but we had another vote on the bollards maybe we can align this vote with that one because there's work to be done is that right yeah it was looking at the number of bollards and uh... wait 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 what we voted on on the bollards was to was to drop the the granite and go with uh, the, the galvanized i believe that's correct. So you, you did a material that's, that's change. That's all we voted. That's all already we voted on. to switch from granite to a concrete filled galvanized steel. Okay. I mean, we've talked a lot about bollards. Let's let's hopefully quickly talk about it in this sense. Now, providing a stainless steel over that galvanized bollard that we're now going with. Do we need that stainless steel sleeve or not? I'm not sure how the negative seventy. Yeah, I'm. I'm can you explain, Mike, can you talk to this a bit? Yeah, I'm not familiar with, with the value or anything, but the, uh, the idea, so what we typically do um, at a front entrance, if we're not using say granite or concrete or something like that, if we're using a steel bollard, we have a couple other projects where we're doing this, where um, rather than putting a galvanized steel bollard out there uh, and then powder coating it or painting it, and that, that requires a lot of um, short and long-term maintenance, um, we, we provide a stainless steel sleeve that literally sleeves over the bollard. There's, there's a couple of different connection way, ways to connect it, but it, it essentially slides over it and connects at the bottom so that it gives the appearance of a stainless steel bollard. We use 316 stainless steel so that it doesn't corrode even in like uh, waterfront conditions, which we don't have to worry about here, but that's what we use. And uh, it just creates a better, uh, uh, a more polished, more, elegant finish to it uh, and but more importantly it provides a lot more durable uh, finish to these so that we, um, we we try to minimize I won't say eliminate but we try to minimize the best as best as possible the uh, the necessity for for maintenance so in so your mind is it more cost effective to have a stainless steel sleeve or powder coat a galvanized baller because I don't I don't know if I agree with this with this, with this value here. Yeah, from a, from a cost perspective, 
it costs less to simply powder coat and paint the steel. Uh, yeah, from so a long-term long maintenance perspective um, and from a visual perspective, it makes sense to put the, uh, the, the stainless steel sleeve over the bowler. So where are these stainless steel sleeves going to be? And how many? Well, I would propose them for anywhere where you have the steel volutes out in the front areas. We, we would never do something like that in the, uh, in the back of house over by the loading dock or anything like that. But where we were showing the, uh, the bollards out in front um, is, was the idea behind that. So that you didn't just have plain stainless steel, painted stainless steel bollards in front of, in, in front of this, uh, in front of this new building. So we're proposing increasing cost. Yeah, I think yeah. this is an ad. Why don't we, could I make a motion to accept 69 and reject 74? And that's all. We should table that or or, or maybe even reject it. I, I'll keep it to 69 and 74. Um, I could second that. <clears throat> So we're voting to accept 69 and reject 74. Charlie, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. Uh, Steve, your hand is up. Any, is there any flavor from the committee to add 72B to that as well? Um, if, if there's one yes and one no, I don't think we should, but if there's no one that opposes accepting 72B, uh, I would be in favor, I would amend my um, motion to include that. I would rather not include them together. Okay, then I'll keep it at 69 and 74. All right, someone wanna make a motion and this will be our last vote. It's been moved and seconded. Okay. Uh, Alexa? Yep. Court? Yes. Heather? Yes. Frank? Wait, I'm looking for him. I'm, Frank, give me your thumb up again or down. I, I can't see. You need to move back. It's up. It's up. It's up. That's thumbs up. Sorry. Peter? Yes. Lori? Yes. Matt Johnson? Matt Johnson? He had to go. I think you skipped Dawn, Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I? Dawn, I'm sorry. I didn't vote yet. Yes. Uh, Pat, yes. Chris? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Matt? Yes. Stephen Stashevsky? Yes. Okay, so those are approved. All right. Um, Move to adjourn and uh, set our next meeting. Can I hear a second? Chair. Second. All right. Our next meeting. Um, do we have one scheduled for next week? We already have one scheduled. We do. So we'll get back at this next week and finalize our our um, our recommend a recommended plan B. Okay. Oh, uh, Dean Banfield wants to know if we can have public comment, please. So. I'm going to call for public com comment. Do I see any public comment requests? Uh, I don't see any. Hand up. Oh, hand up, Dean. Uh, yes. Uh, simple question. I, we didn't get to one of the items, but um, looked in detail uh, at some of the spec sheets that were provided for the the full DD uh, set that was reconciled. I was just want to ask the professionals if the bid set that was created for the DD process has a corresponding estimate set that goes with it. Um, I'm just looking at, in detail at a couple of the items that are in there. There's a lot of expense in a few of them that I'd like to just understand a little more closely. And it would be nice to be able to look at the detailed estimation of some of those items so that uh, that's really my question thank you dean and that will be duly noted um, okay uh, so we have a motion to adjourn and uh i don't need to do a roll call i think we can just adjourn 
Thank you, everybody. See you next Thanks, year. Everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, Pat. Thanks.